Double O, artistic. Good evening. How's it going? Mons, good evening. Wanted to try out the new weapons that just dropped before the uh, before Smash rolls around. Starting early. Yeah, uh, we're. I'm gonna start early mostly because I'm not gonna stream for a super long time. Uh, Brian is swinging by tonight. We're gonna try to record some more episodes of Dust. I gotta remember, I need to get a decent night's sleep tonight, so I can, uh, so I'll be able to take a, a bit of a nap after I get off work tomorrow, and then I'll be able to start streaming, uh, Smash at midnight. So, can't wait! As no, good evening! Uh, oh, artistic, you're getting splat for Christmas. Neato. Also, I'm super disappointed, oh. That is a lot more weapons than I was expecting. Ooh, okay. Because I had seen the, the promotional image that came out for the new weapon update. The image didn't show a, uh... The image didn't show the custom x Blosher, so I wasn't sure if that was a hoax, or if they... If Nintendo backpedaled on that or not. Because I remember... I remember people were saying that there would be a new x Blosher, but they didn't, um... You know, it didn't show up in the image, so I thought, oh, uh, maybe it was either a hoax or, you know, uh, Nintendo just backed out on it. Because, you know, I, I believed it was going to happen, because so many people kept saying, oh yeah, there's a, a new x Blosher, you should try it out when it, uh, when it comes out. And none of the promotional image showed it, so I thought... Oh, maybe it was fake? But I guess not. I did see Custom x Blosher. And it has the point sensor! Ah! Ooh. Ah. Oh, goodness. Oh, how many... What, was there, like... I, I was not paying attention. Were there, like, six or eight new weapons? Because I know there was a good bit more than just, uh... Than just four. I was expecting only four. There's a, a bit more than four. That's kind of neat. Good lord. Uh, I want this. Oh, whoops. And, no, never mind, I don't want that. Oh, oh and I need to check. That one thing, because I saw the goggles had that new, uh, main power-up ability. Yeah. Wait, what? I'm sorry, what? Eat your sand, there's no way to... St oh, okay. Alright, what's this new stuff? I need, I need these new weapons. These need to happen. I need these in my life. What's... All right, a shell to make it snappy. What we got? That's a 52. Uh, oh. Okay, I don't know about the, um... I don't know about the splash wall, but the Booyah Bomb is kind of nice. Rapid Blaster, eh. Whatever. Blob, ugh. Great. Blob Blobber Deco. Uh, uh, what's... Yeah, see, I love that the new x Blosher has the point sensor, but I don't know how I feel about the baller as a special, though. <sighs> yeah, because... Because mm. you're supposed to be using the x Blosher at range, but... Unless you're using the baller as an emergency escape? I don't really see why they would have that as the... I don't know. Whatever. Understand. Okay, great. Uh, oh, okay. I mean, I don't really use the ballpoint, but I guess with the rain cloud, that's not bad. 
Okay, great. 79. Hmm. Okay. Holy crap. Okay, so there's eight weapons. Jesus. Oh, hey, it has armor. Ooh, okay. Oh, what's the... Amiibo tournament? Like, just using Amiibo characters or something? Or... I mean, I guess, maybe? God, I need all of these weapons right now. I need literally everything you have, Sheldon. Time zone to smash. Well, I mean, it's supposed to be midnight in each person's time zone, I would imagine, but... Turf for private battle? Probably turf. Mostly going on turf. Uh, honestly, I don't... I leave the thing open for anyone to join in. I mean, it's not a, you know, specific day or anything. It's just, you know, if you have, uh, if you have my friend code, if you're on my friends list, and you see me in turf, then just jump in. I mean, it's not, it's not like, oh, I only do this on special occasions. It's, if you see me on, jump in. You don't need my permission. I do kind of want to see what's... I don't want to jump straight to the x washer though. I want to try some other stuff. What's, um... Okay, so let's see. You know what? I used to... I used to do okay with the gal. I'm gonna go with this one. Let's see. So I gotta remember, this one does not have the same, um... Friend... Oh, shoot. Hold on. Yeah, I completely forgot about, uh... And, of course, I don't have it typed into the, uh... into my clipboard. I used to be really good about keeping my uh, my friend code on the clipboard so I could just control V it into the thing at any time and I completely have not been doing that. Hold on a second. Just showing online? Oh, Mons, good call. I'm usually not online. I usually tell my uh, my switch to hide my status. I'm probably showing offline right now. Aha! Good call, Mons. Good catch. Keeping out, keeping a better eye out than I am. Toys, toys, they're right here. We got all the toys right here. Kensa, everything. Mm, yeah, I think I'm probably gonna go with the with the gal. Uh, let's see. What does I have? Okay, I do kind of want to lean on the special, maybe, though. Let's see. Um, should I? No. Nah, I think that's fine. Okay. I'm good with that. And I do want to check. Since there's a new ability, is there a new drink for it, too? Or... Yeah, there it is. Okay. Main up guava. Oh, all right. Okay. Sorry, toys. Hey, those are anything can be a toy, if uh, if you have the right mindset. And no name. That's not the right mindset. Not with that attitude, they ain't toys. Uh, oh, I just realized it's only gonna have like 20 minutes before the uh, before the stage rotation is. Everyone hype? Heck yes, I am quite hype about. Uh, about Smash. I took the day off Friday so I could just stream it almost all day. I'm gonna be all over that game. Let's see, what's gonna be next? Starfish and then, ugh, I can't trigger fish. <laughs> Sorry. Where's my... I love my drink back there. Oh, hey, Weird Al.
Ooh, I probably don't remember anything about how to play the gal. They've also got Sniper. Just kind of chuck that into wherever the heck. No man's land over there or whatever. Oh, jeez! What found the uh, ink yet? <laughs> All over Smash? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Dude, I can't wait! I imagine, uh... Once I get a decent, um... Not loadout. That's not the word I'm looking for. Uh... Like a decent set of gear. Emphasize a bit. Oh shit! Is it the sniper? Okay, no, it was that guy. New Kensa? Yeah, it's New Kensa stuff. Uh, there's like eight New Kensa weapons. Like, holy crap. Like, I was expecting four? I was not expecting four Kensa weapons. Huck that over there. Ooh, okay, alright, just kidding. Ah, I tried to dance around him. Yeah, it is uh, more than just the uh, typical four. That's all I was expecting, and uh, Sheldon, uh, Sheldon brought gifts for Christmas. waste your money on a good game so what have you been wasting your money on previously if not on good games what, the, what are the weapons oh geez there are so many uh there's this it's a variation on the uh, the old 52 gal it was a weapon that has a slightly slower rate of fire but slightly higher range and power and i actually used to do pretty well with this weapon like when the game first came out uh an alternate uh, alternate blob lobber and x blosher which is nice uh, I didn't I didn't get the the special I wanted but I did get the sub that I wanted for the x blosher so I'm fine with that I I, I don't mind getting a point sensor for uh, for an x blosher I kind of really wanted that uh, there are two new uh, splatlings with different loadouts like not new variations but uh, different sub and special loadouts for the mini splatling which was you know a little bit uh, didn't have as much range but had much faster charge up time than the other splatlings and uh, what was called the nautilus you could actually like uh, charge up a burst submerge and still hold it and then come up somewhere else and fire it off but uh trying to think there was at least one other one i don't oh there was a set of the um the uh, the Gluga Duelies, the one you, the ones that you said were kind of underwhelming in Salmon Run because of its slow rate of fire, but that's because each shot has more oomph than a uh, than a regular duelie does. Oh shoot! Oh god! 
Ah, I was trying to fire off the thing. And it didn't happen. I saw the missiles and I was like, oh, okay, I just need to uh, get away from the... Oh, shoot. <laughs> Okay, I thought I had my super, but... Uh, rapid, bl rapid Blaster, that was it. That's what it was, the Rapid Blaster. Whoa! Alright, okay, that's cute. Okay, all right, let's not be over there. Forgetting that I have Splash Wall as my uh, as my sub rather than the uh... <sighs> I swear the best way to make me look like I've just played the game is to just spam the rolls with the dualies. I cannot uh, I can't fix aim that well. I think I successfully went killless that entire match. Oof. That is not my best work. Loadout of the new x Uh, Point Sensor and the Baller. I'm very happy that the Point Sensor is on it. I did want the x to, uh, you know, emphasize the, the support role a lot more, but I'm not really happy with the baller though. So the thing is the X-Blasha, you're supposed to use it at distance. It's supposed to be a backline defense weapon, but the the baller is a very much up close and get in their weapon. So it's like y the special that it's assigned is completely opposite of how the weapon itself is supposed to be used and I have a pretty low opinion about that. That is not uh not happy about that. I remember the first, uh, like the regular x Blosher, you know, I didn't really utilize the bubbles that much. I would just chuck them out just to get the, um, just to get my ammo back up and then just go back to shooting the main weapon, but mm, I don't know about the, uh, the baller though, it's I don't know. I don't feel like I could just use that just to refuel ammo and then do do something else. It's kind of... Mm.
Ooh, okay, doing a little bit better than I was before. Dino. Okay, I don't know how I how I survived that blast though. That was a. Uh... I would have liked Tenta missiles on the X Blasher, to be honest. Just fire it, get that uh, just to, you know, fire off the missiles, get the ammo back up, and just immediately go back to X Blasher. I would love that. I honestly do think it would be a two OP, but to be honest, I think the X Blasher itself is two OP. But that's that does not stop me from using it. <laughs> I have no freaking clue how I survived that, uh, that splashdown hit. I don't think that should have been possible. That's the blue yes, it is a super. There were a couple times in the last, uh, the last match on, uh, on Manta Maria when I thought I had enough to, uh, to use it, so I would just jump into danger and I'm like, Oh, I don't actually have enough. Okay. So that was a bit of an oopsie on my part. I'm trying to work on my aim, because I know that was something that uh, I was able to be super relaxed on with the x Blosher, and it completely killed my ability to aim. But At least get one hit on him. Uh, up on with X Blosher. I mean, I guess it would be kind of nice, but I don't know. I I just prefer the Tenta missile just because it's a very much uh, pull the trigger and forget about it. You don't have to worry. It, the missiles do the rest of the work. I would have either liked that or the armor with the uh, the Booyah bomb just to you know further. Like, drive home the whole, um... Drive home the whole, you know, support role for that. Oh, jeez! Ah, that... I do not like where that bubble is just hanging out. Ooh! Jesus Christ!
pop that over the horizon. There you go. Someone get him! I don't know who that is. Better keep that spot safe. Please! Jeez, oh. That was, uh... Yikes. That was a squishing. Oh, no wonder. Two people dipped. Jeez. I was like, man, we're, we're doing pretty well. How, how'd they... Why'd they stop fighting all of a sudden? And I didn't even notice two people on the other team completely dropped. That stinks. Man. Ah, that's butt. I was like so rev too. I was like, yeah, all right. And then I see two zeros at the bottom. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> well, dang. Hmm. Well, it is significantly more difficult to be happy about a win like that. Oh dear. Whoa, haha, <laughs> okay. gonna run forward but yikes Oops. Well, that's not where I wanted to go, but okay. Oh dear. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. I'll stand up there because I was like, okay, so the x blosher is not going to... The shots won't impact on the, the... The mesh grating, so... 
was mostly keeping an eye for the other X Blosher and. Whoa, okay. Oof. Is that Rainmaker Super somewhere? No, Rainmaker is strictly ranked. It is ranked match only. SML, good evening. Yeah, closest thing you can really do to um, to play Rainmaker on a, a regular turf match is just X Blosher. Plain turf, yeah, pretty much. Oh, it kicked me all the way back out to the thing. But it would have left me at least in the. Um, the, uh, the lobby. Ah, oh, whatever. What does new x Blosher have? It has the point sensor and the... Where's it at? Here we go. Point sensor and the baller. I am super happy about the point sensor because I love that, uh, I love that sub. I'm glad there's actually a useful weapon that has the point sensor. So, you know, cold-blooded still sucks, but at least, you know, point sensor's getting a little bit more, uh, representation. And kind of uh, sort of exemplifies, you know, the X Blosher as a support weapon. But I do not have a positive opinion about the baller being the special for that thing. Because I don't like the idea of having to get up close with the X Blosher. That is not where it does its best work. So unless you're using it as a, um, am I maining the new one? I haven't tried it yet. I wanted to try out the other stuff first, because I already know I'm going to be all over the custom X Blosher. Uh, whether or not I'm maining it, not sure, because I don't like the baller as much as I like the bubble blower, but then I like the point sensor way more than I like the sprinkler. <laughs> so it's kind of difficult at the moment to judge which one I like better. I mean, I haven't even really tried the, the new X Blosher, so I think it's a little bit early for me to say on that one. I'm going to try the... Uh, Blah blah blah, Billy Bobber or whatever. Uh, don't start. Uh, okay. I mean, I. I'm just gonna... Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, if you're garbage, if you squid bag. Ha ha. That's uh, that's not me saying it. That's this guy, girl, beast girl, this person. And just because I'm, I'm not saying it, but I'm definitely agreeing with it. Wait hours. Eat your sand. I don't. I, I. I don't get what it's supposed to be. Uh, just when people get close to. You. Okay, so it's. So it is more of just a, uh, like an emergency button, like just an escape, sort of a like an escape tool, basically. Okay. Splatfest 2019. <laughs> But, ah, Pyro, welcome back. Yeah, SML, you said uh, don't start, but, I mean, I'm going to be in turf. It just, you can jump into thing. Is there anything about Rainmaker? Yes. Yes, I did. The Rainmaker, you actually cannot, uh, you can only do in ranked. Turf is just turf. It doesn't actually, it's, you know, regular matches is just turf. It's the same old whatever. Uh, X Blosher is the closest thing you can get to uh, a Rainmaker in turf. It's basically Rainmaker Jr. Oh, there we we have we have an Ass Blaster in. Uh, we, there's there's an Ass Blaster in the um, in the game. There's that guy. He he blasts ass. Why? All right. Be a super. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it might be kind of odd as a super because you'd have to. Cause, I mean, it's got a bit of a charge up time. But I don't know. It's.
Oh, I was trying to get the, uh... I keep forgetting how slow the, uh... The suction bombs are to fire. boy. Did my teammate just buoy out for my death? Come on, man. What's the matter with you? Oh, what a shame. Well now. Jeez. I uh, thought the bubble thing... The bubble thing is the toilet. It absolutely is the toilet. You could, you know, any of you guys can call it any other stuff. The sink, the bathtub, the toilet. I'm calling it the toilet. That definitely feels like a uh, toilet. So it's the bathtub. Eh, pff, whatever. Looks more like a toilet. That looks more like... A facility I would urinate in, on, or around. Maybe not around. That's gross. And now that I think about it, that person that had the, um... person in the square that had the post that said, uh, if you squid bag your garbage, I need to just, like, screen cap that and keep that for reference. So we gotta remember, they do have a sniper this time. They got someone rushing. Oh dear, okay! Alright, just kidding. That's a lot of blue.
I saw him and I was kind of hoping I could get the uh, the pot before he did, and it didn't happen. All right, some Joker's probably gonna try to come over here. Here, some Joker may already be here. Well then. Oh, someone dipped. Oh, our roller disappeared. How long has he been gone? the Rainmaker rapid fire? No, please do not do that. What? Did... Seriously? Did someone on their team dip too? No? Huh, okay. Yeah, I noticed... I noticed our roller dropped a little ways in and I thought that was it. Alright. Oh, okay. Alright. <laughs> Was not expecting a win on that one. Jeez. Hurricane Cannon be a soup. The um, I don't. They actually there was actually a uh, a super in the first game. Kinda similar to what you're talking about. It was a um, it was it was something called the Ink Zuka. It was like a. Basically, it shot tornadoes in a straight line in front of you, and anything it hit was a one-hit kill. And it didn't go all the way across the arena, but it made a, a deceptively long distance, though. Like, there were a few times when I'd be at one end of the arena, and I'm thinking, Oh yeah, there's no way he's gonna hit me, and, like, it's something that, you know, even after getting killed, it still doesn't look like it should have hit, but totally did, so it's... Oh. Oh dear. Oh jeez. Move. Oh, uh, he did not. I keep forgetting that the uh, the layout of the stage changed. I was about to pop myself off that uh surface there. Crap. Jeez, um. That was a whole lot of bum all at once. The, the Ink Zuka was good if you could aim with it. Spoilers, I could not aim with it. <laughs>
Oh, come on. Oof. Yeah, I think that... Well... Okay. Oof, that last push. Jeez. Ooh. Dang, that dually guy got 10 kills. But he only got 400-something points. Did he only go for kills and literally nothing else? Okay. He's not in it for the ink, just the blood. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm over here like, no, no, really, you, you have to, you have to ink the turf. It's, you have to, to cover, cover the area. Ah, seeing other people using the X blush, it makes me want to go back to it. But I told myself I was at least gonna try these other weapons. Okay, all right, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Can you take a joke? Oh dear. Okay. Oh, come on. And that would oh dear oh sneaky Dang it. Pfft. Come on, up and at him. Whoop. Please move, please move, please. Oh dear. Mm. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Fire one. Throw, throw one somewhere. Yeah, the old specials like the uh, the ink strike and the kraken. Dude, I loved the ink strike. That was crazy fun. Especially when you had uh, 
Especially when, when you'd be playing on Mulray Towers, you'd have that one sniper across the way that would just pay attention to everything in front of them, and then you just drop an ink strike on their head. Fun. And then the Kraken was great, just, you know, bulldozing over everyone and until you forget that you're in permanent squid mode, and then you fall through a grate on Mahi Resort, and you just, you, you die. That was fun until the, the last part. What's happening? Are we talking about uh, Team Fortress 2? Oh, jeez. Dude, there were so many people during uh, some of the the red ink uh, splat fests. Like, um, shoot, what was it? Like, not, not as many during the salsa versus guacamole one, but during the ketchup versus mayo one. So many people saying that, oh, it's it, the red ink is blood. It's like, haha, okay, so you're an edgy teenager now, great. But Wonder oh shoot. <laughs> Oop. Oh jeez. Okay. Oh, that's where someone's going. Okay. Oh man, what a shame. Oh crap. Trying to get out of there. I saw the person scanning the horizon. I was like, you know what? They are definitely gonna spot the uh, the X. Sniper. Ooh, I hope those bubbles traveled. Ooh. Uh, hey, e uh, e Ise? Is that how you pronounce it? Is it is it pronounced Ise? I don't. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Sniper is going. Well, to that person's credit, though, the sniper is primarily supposed to be for kills. They're supposed to pick off other targets so that the rest of the team can move in. So they were doing the, uh, they were doing what they were supposed to as a sniper. I was just unlucky enough to keep finding my way into, uh, into the crosshairs. Uh, oh, I don't know which one I want to use. Um, you know what, sure. If nothing else, just for the armor. Oh, that's just a clan name? 
Well, then what's the... Oh, it's Zot. Is it Zero Zara? 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 Zara! Probably butchering that name horribly. No wonder he had the sploosh. I'm about to say, I was like, man, how did... You know, if I got the first couple of shots, how did he manage to... To still trade kills? He had the sploosh. Okay. That would explain it. Those missiles gonna drop, or... Okay, there they are. Just kidding. Move! Move, please! Whew. Oh, that shield absolutely saved my butt. Oh, dear! <laughs> Ooh, sneaky. Get over there. Oh, dear. Hey, what's up? Yo. I have moon pies. You got what? Moon pies. What'd you just call me? An eater of moon pies. Oh. <coughs> Hello. Ah! Did you did you want me to adjust camera after uh, the stream? It depends yeah. on if they want to see this muggly mug. <laughs> so people can see your your beautiful visage. That's a word for it. What? What visage? I mean, it's not the. I mean, it's not the right. Beautiful is a word for it. That's oh. not the right word, but it is a word. Let's say visage is also not the correct pronunciation for it either. seem excited to see slash hear you. Oh darn, wish I'd have put on uh, my pretty face then. Your pretty face? Uh, I still have my name tag in case. Oh, what's on. your... Oh, you just got out of work. I had to head home first, feed the dogs and uh -oh. such. Puppers needed supper. Okay, supper for pupper? Yep. Rita's on soft food now, so I had to okay. crack oh. open a fresh can for her. She alright? Or uh, she's just, just got old or lady teeth. Or it's just age? Just yeah. old lady teeth? Yeah. Is that the the <clears throat> medical diagnosis? Uh, that and stank breath. It's like, but that's caused by the old lady teeth. Uh, I'm sorry. I I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm afraid we diagnosed her with old lady teeth. Yeah. With a side case I of damn, that's nasty. I know those comes. <laughs> the the scientific term. Yeah. That the medical professionals use. I mean, she's 15 years old. I think at this Jesus. point... Jesus! Yeah. Rita's 15. Ooh. I mean, oh, I got please. her in 2005. Please don't remind me. I, I do not need a reminder of her mortality. No, I got her in early 2006, but... Like, like, like January 2006. Oh, my god. But goodness. I first saw her in uh, September of 2005, as in shortly after Katrina. 
she was a stray at the apartment I was soon to move into. Didn't get to move until October, thanks to the storm. Ugh. And she was still there. Her owners had abandoned her after taking her puppies. They bred her and then abandoned her. And then, then failed? Yeah. And then another elderly couple took her in, but back then Rita was way too excited <laughs> to be able to be handled by an elderly couple, and they abandoned her. Good lord. And one day I'm walking to the vending machine, and the maintenance guy has her, like, on a leash and is apologizing to her. So I'm nosy. I ask what the story is with her. And he, you know, tells me about what I just mentioned about being abandoned. Uh, he also just happened to be married to the, the actual property manager of the mm -hmm. place. And um, he's like, you know what? Let me make a call. Because I know you're a dog person. He calls her, then gets, looks back at me and goes, do you want her? If you give her a good home and promise not to abandon her, we won't charge you a pet fee. Which would have been $300. Jesus. You. Yeah, the pet fee at those apartments was expensive. Uh, mostly under the expectation that it wouldn't be refunded because, you know, dogs. Because dogs? But, uh, yeah, I was like, sure, I don't want this dog to, to go bad. And our other dog could, could definitely use the company when we're not there. Uh, little did we know Chloe would occasionally just beat her ass. Cause, oh, my God. Uh, Chloe would occasionally get jealous, but, you know. But yeah, um, ever, she's been my dog ever since. Uh, she even was briefly, she could, she kind of would notify me when I was going to have a neurological event. She wasn't trained to, she just kind of could tell long it was coming and would kind of stress out and kind of make me focus on her for a minute, which would pull me out of it. Because it, it was usually like uh, when you space out for a second and your brain is like must stare at things. Mm -hmm. If I let that happen for too long, sometimes I just get full body paralysis and collapse. You just, you, so, your brain blue screens? You pretty much, <laughs> complete with a dink noise that would pop up on windows. <laughs> but uh, she started like freaking out when I was about to have that happen and would just kind of stop it from happening. Or, or, or you know, kind of remind me it was about to happen so I could put myself in a place where the collapse wouldn't hurt. Of course, then she would stare at me like, all right, dad, get out of this so you can feed me. <laughs> But, uh, oh, yeah. Jesus. I have now become her service human, so, in her old age. But hey, she survived a snake bite to the face two years ago, so I think she'll outlive us all. Now, careful, I used to say the same thing about, uh, about my old dog Pepper. Yeah, I like Pepper. Like, we used to say that, uh, you know, even if we went to euthanize her, the, uh, you know, the vet would, you know, put her down and she'd wake up about 20 minutes later licking her chops like, what happened? <laughs> yeah. What did you schmucks do? I'm hungry. And then she would nose ram you for attention. Yeah. That dog could separate muscle with a good nose ram. <laughs> <coughs> oh, God. But, yeah. Uh, oh, man. I mean, two dogs later and she's still around. Because I had two other dogs. You know, I had Chloe. She passed away, unfortunately. And then oh. we had Sunny. She passed away. Good Lord. But, uh... But Rita's just immortal at this point. Yeah. I mean, she, she occasionally will, like... You know, pull a hip or whatever, and she'll be kind of mopey for a couple of days. But most days, she's the spryest thing, especially if she knows that we're about to open that can of food. Oh, Jesus. So. And lately, she's developed this thing where she will find a way through the fence in the backyard and disappear, and I will find her two houses down in the backyard, wondering how she got there. And it's the sweetest old lady that lives there. She's like, yeah, your, your dog's in the backyard again. She's a sweetheart. Jeez. So I think she just goes to visit. <laughs> <coughs> She's why I have gray hairs. Definitely. Oh, shoot. I didn't even realize I got a friend request last episode. Oh, hey. Or not episode. <laughs> uh, match. Excuse me. Yeah, on the... Yeah, when I get the results screen after this match, I'll go ahead and accept it. See if I can accept it and jump back into the match quick enough. Hopefully. I'm also reading the, the chat on my phone so I can try to keep up. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, oh, geez. There is a there is a, a sniper named Salt Mines. And I predict obviously nothing but the best. Oh, well, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. There's a uh, there's a Brilla just kind of hanging out right, right there. How okay, does that cool. phrase go? All these flavors and they choose to be salty? Yeah. All these flavors, you choose to be salty. Ooh, okay, all right. Well. Yeah, that guy just double killed. Oh, no one's, really? No one's up there, okay. Ah, 
actually. I was messing around with Fortnite on the Switch because I was too lazy to go play it on the Xbox the other day. Okay. And I was just messing around with the options to turn on the auto pickup because I forgot to enable that on my Switch version because I, I never play it on my Switch. Okay. Didn't realize the game but, but, offered but, tilt controls oh, like work. this. It actually offers tilt-based aiming like like uh, Splatoon yeah, I thought, does. I thought you found that out before. Uh -uh. Like I even asked if it did. and Oh, no, never mind. That was on Doom. Yeah, Doom does it. I don't like it on Doom. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wasn't a big a fan of it on uh, Fortnite either, but I think it's just because I'm used to playing it with regular controls. But I think if I Probably if, it. if I don't chicken out and actually just force myself to get used to it, I think I will. But at the moment, I've become a sucker for the Fortnite action figures by Jazzwares, which are actually kind of tickling my fancy more than even the, the uh, McFarlane ones, which are great, but those I just you know buy one or two and just leave them in the poses. But the Jazzware ones, they come with little pieces of the buildings. Okay. Like a walls, but they snap together and you can bend them in different ways to, to build basically oh, so anything you can... you can build in the game made with the regular flat pieces. Okay, so it's like building from the game. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, and like each one comes with different weapons and items from the game. And I've now got, let's see, I have seven of them. Jesus. Yeah. I bought a four pack today because I'm a sucker. But I mean, it came, it was the only way I could get Cuddle Team Leader in that scale. And that's like my Shh. primary skin that I play, so... Oh, I couldn't even reach the guy in there. If y'all ever see a cuddle team leader named Game Zombie running around in the game, just you have pity. I know full well that a bright pink bear is not exactly camouflaged against a green background. Tomorrow the new season starts, too. Oh, I'm kind of excited. Oh, I was hoping I could roll away. Ooh, that's... Ooh, that's kind of close, actually. Someone in the chat says that people want the song Sweet Victory from Spongebob sung at the Super Bowl. Why? I have no clue, but you know what? I'm for it. <laughs> Why? I love Subversion. And throwing Ooh. early Spongebob stuff, like early Spongebob, you know? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Like, Throw a quest. Got it. Go ahead. Uh, but yeah, like... Early Spongebob is fine. After they did the, the showrunner change, like from like when the original creator left and a bunch of fresh new people came in, that's when they lost me. But I understand they were trying to keep it fresh for another generation of kids, you know? Yeah. I aged out of it. But I still go back and watch some of the original episodes that were hand-drawn as opposed to computer-drawn, and they hold up. So that song is great because it is so just absolute cheeseball. You know, that's the, that's the Is Mayonnaise an Instrument episode. <laughs> okay. So I love it. So, so someone's asking, what are your thoughts on uh, Ratchet and Clank? I actually, I was about to start typing the answer to that. Uh, I haven't played the new one yet, and I, I missed out on the movie. Um, now, the um, original games, I liked them. I really like uh, the one nobody likes, which was Ratchet Deadlocked. <laughs> I actually bought the new one. Yeah? Yeah, the the guy who asked the question, Pyro, he convinced me to, to buy it. Oh, okay. No. I know it's a it's a remake of the first game, but it's actually more based on the movie, which is a remake of it, and I'm for it because originally they were going to get big-named Hollywood actors to play Ratchet and Clank, and due to fan demand, they got the original actors. Oh, that's neat. <clears throat> One of whom is the announcer from John Oliver. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Clank. He's also Beast Wars Megatron. I'll see how you remember this many of voice actors. I have a thing for voice actors. <clears throat> I've got like maybe the two or three voice actors that I like and everyone else is just that guy. I mean, one of the things I do to prep my voice on the way over here, because I usually do different voice exercises on the way over so I don't throw my voice out while we're recording, uh, is I will pick some of my favorite scenes in games or animated film and just from memory do impersonations of every character in the scenes. Usually it's just dialogue, two characters back and forth, but it, it's just my way of, of flexing and stuff, and I I would love to do voice acting, and I'm still mad that my one chance got capped by a computer glitch. What? I was going to oh, be doing right. those two Transformer the... voices for a fan dub, but... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear! Yeah. And then, of course, last year, <laughs> the two characters <laughs> I voiced, they finally <laughs> did new action figures of them. <laughs> Uh, which ones? Uh, Skullcruncher, the crocodile, and Weird Wolf, the wolf. 
A weird wolf? Yeah. Although, is, uh, is that his name or is that a title? No, his name is Weird Wolf, and the other guy was Skull Cruncher. Though, uh, they decided that Skull Cruncher was too violent, so his name is Skull Smasher now. Oh, and much better. Weird Wolf, they thought, was too, like, weird. So they named him Wolf Lawyer, you mean, which is... You mean the, the guy that has weird in his name? Yeah, they thought it was, was too, too weird, weird sounding, so they named him Wolf Wire, which is totally easier to say. Though I, I like the way that they did their, their little headmaster changes, because they actually have little robots that come with them that turn into their heads. And one uh, weird, weird Wolf, which is what I'm going to call him, his guy's name was Monzo, M-O-N-Z-O. Monzo? They couldn't get that name back, which is funny because there was a guy who went by the handle of Monzo that used to be on the boards that would uh, constantly keep track of the uh, the trademarks filed and kind of remind Hasbro when they were about to come up so Hasbro could retain the certain names. That's why every now and then you'd get Transformers that weren't those characters just having those names slapped on them. It was just a retained trademark. And that guy Monzo kind of helped him. Somehow they forgot to trademark Monzo, so they changed it to M-O-N-X-O. Monzo. Well, uh, the um, Skull Cruncher, his guy's name was Gort. G-O-R-T. Gort? Yeah. Now, they couldn't trademark that one because there was that really, really shitty The Day the Earth Stood Still movie, and of course, Gort is the name of the uh, big metal alien in the movie. So that trademark is no longer something they can do. So they're like, ah, oh, we threw an X on the last one, so they just changed his name to Zort, X-O-R-T. Zort? Yeah, it was. it's stupid, but I love it. I love a good bit of stupid trade. Oh, there's a whole lot of blue over here. Holy Pete. Uh, as for the, the PS3 ones, yeah, definitely Deadlocked was my favorite of the uh, Ratchet & Clank ones, just because I could go to first person, and I, I, I just, it was a surprisingly good first person shooter. Uh, this was back in my I love time splitters and only time splitters is good days. Oh dear god. <laughs> this was a better first person shooter in terms of control than time splitters because that control scheme hasn't aged well. I'm not sure if you've noticed. What, but, time splitters? Yeah, the time splitters control scheme of hold the button to move the aiming reticle around the screen and all that for well, movement. I mean, you could actually toggle <coughs> it. You could switch between yeah. like hold and toggle. And I know the one thing that I hated was like if... If you brought up the the uh, aiming reticle, because you could mm -hmm. switch it on or off. Yeah. If you brought it up, like, if you tilted the stick one way, it wouldn't move the screen. It would just move the weapon slightly. Yeah. But if you went too far, then you'd, you'd start, start moving. That yeah. part I hated. Like, it was good. It was definitely built off of the N64 days of having only oh, yeah. one analog stick. But, um, I don't know. I, I feel like if they redid Time Splitters, the modern first-person shooter style would be good. I mean, throw the ability to pull the reticle up there any time, but... But I, don't do the weird tilt thing. Yeah. Like where it sort of moves the reticle all over the screen and then... Honestly, it's a it's a time to the, use the touchpad on the PS4 controller. Have just the touchpad move that oh. reticle while you're firing and shooting. Cause, oh, good Because I can, I can use the tip of my thumb to touch on the touchpad while using the ball of my thumb to actually still move the analog stick because I have weird multi-jointed thumbs. But uh, I have a couple of the PS3 ones. Um, I have All for One, which... That one's fun with a, with a group of people. It's meant to be played four players. And that was a lot of fun. Um, I haven't really delved into the other ones yet, but I will say, I love their pun game. Not sure if you Ooh. know, but Ratchet & Clank, they, a lot of their games had kind of suggestive titles, like yeah. Up Your, Up your arsenal, arsenal, Going Commando, yeah. stuff like that. Um, Oof. But, Come on, sneaky. You know, oh, I, they were using the ballpoint. No wonder. <clears throat> I was actually more of a Jack and Daxter guy back in the day than Ratchet & Clank, so... You know, I need to get on that. But I own, I think, all of them. <laughs> He's saying uh, episodes of, of Ratchet and Clank when? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we can definitely do it anytime. Um, so this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking. Uh, now, obviously, this whole... These are, these are just ideas, and these are very subject to change. But what we were discussing, like, uh, between episodes, was we could do... Um, like, after we after you finish Dust... We could go back to Hoddle for Boyfriend, yeah. the Holiday Star, just because of the, um, because it's a Christmas game. And then after that, I mean, it's pretty much open to whatever at that yeah. point. I've got a couple of ideas that I'd like to throw out there, especially some games I've never played before either that I wouldn't mind delving into that I know are good. Uh, I've got like Hollow Knight and a couple of others. And I have some nonsense that I'd like to get up on here. Y'all remember the glorious classic that was Honor and Duty, right? Oh, dear God. So, apparently it's on PlayStation VR in beta right now, and I have it. Why do you have it? Because it's Honor and Duty. 
<laughs> That's why you shouldn't have it. <laughs> Which is exactly why not, I do. You have not given me a reason why you why you should have it or why you do have it. Like any proper scientist, I am more concerned about whether or not I can than whether or not I should. Oh dear god. <laughs> Life uh finds a way. Oh dear Oh god Okay. And I'm also still desperately uh, hoping that we get a maze two eventually. Oh dear. But they blew up! So? Bob and Ted are still out there somewhere. So you, uh, you bring up a good point. So what? <laughs> that is actually a... Uh... That is the Bob and Ted way of doing science. You can't do this, so? <laughs> we made Vladdy, damn it. Cordially, Ted? Yeah. Oh, God. Sincerely, Bob. Dude, I still remember... Dude, I remember losing my shit. That one uh, series of notes when uh, Ted's like super calm yeah. for most of it. <laughs> and then the last one, like super huge text. Gorgely dead! And it's just like a rambling stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd also like to get you to play uh, Axiom Verge because we enjoyed the last uh, mm. major Metroidvania we played. Right. What's the last major Metroidvania? Uh, we played that, um, that Toho game. Oh, Double Focus. Yeah, Double Focus, that's it. Right, okay. Uh... Doki Doki. See, one thing I didn't, I was going to bring up, um, depending on what things, this this is kind of projecting pretty far. Yeah. But in February for the whole Valentine's Day thing, uh, playing Doki Doki Literature Club. Totally appropriate. Because, see, now I, I do know this. The, um, I know that the game does go south at one point, but I don't know how, I don't know who, and I don't know when. It goes so, so. south it laps itself and continues on southward. <laughs> The game is awesome. So, like, it goes south, it hits the South Pole, and goes so far south that it goes back up north again? Yeah, slaps Santa Claus on the ass and then heads back south. <laughs> that game is amazing. Uh, uh, pure swimming speed. I did not check. I, I'm sitting here, like, running my mouth about, uh, about dogs and what our what future videos may happen later on. I, I'm not even, not even paying attention to, like, gear after I get, uh, after I get popped. Oh, now you're on my team, so I can't even check your gear now. Well, shoot. Oh, bother. I should change weapons after this one, because honestly, the Gluga Doolies... Not, uh... Language? Feeling. What? I can't say Gluga Doolies live on stream. Says who? Hey, if other people can say the N-word, I can say Gluga, alright? That's not nearly as racist. Alright, is that how it works? I don't know, I'm white. I don't know what racist is. If it's slightly less racist, then it doesn't count. <laughs> That's definitely how it works, right? Yes. And then all was silent. <laughs> the... Oh, dang it. But yeah, the... For, for duelies that are supposed to be, like, super quick, I keep forgetting that the, these specific duelies are not quick. <clears throat> they are very not what one could, would consider a speedy weapon. I should probably oh dear. check what games I've recently got on the Switch for you to try, because I've, I've actually bought a few oh God. games. That is never a good sign when you say, I just bought games. Do I know what they are? Probably not. Like... Imagine a Why do you just buy games when you don't? Because they're 99 cents, and I, I I figure, you know what, at 99 cents, if the developer, you know, even if I get anything out of it, 99 cents is worth it, even if it just kills a few minutes of time waiting for food to finish, you know? Oh my goodness. I found one game that is a turn-based strategy game, think like Final Fantasy Tactics, okay. but with cars. And one thing you have to take into account while making your move is, if you continue in a straight line, your vehicle builds momentum. So... When you end your turn, you might skid out of your space. You might fall off a cliff, into hazards. Oh. So you've got to make sure that you're like you're like con conserving your momentum and controlling where you're gonna go, so you don't wreck and die. Oh. I suck at this game, but think oh. think a Mad Max strategy game. <coughs> it's okay. I feel like if I if I delve into it enough, it's it's an interesting one. Um, All um, right. There's Starlink, which is freaking amazing. Oh, isn't that that one with the um. Like, what was it? Uh, basically, the 
like Skylanders, but with ships. It's like Skylanders meets No Man's Sky with a big heaping helping of Star Fox rubbed all over it. You know what? Minute. You had me till you said No Man's Sky. Well, the No Man's Sky part is the every planet in the star uh, in the Atlas system is fully mapped, like in No Man's Sky. So you can traverse the entire planet. But unlike No Man's Sky, they're also created, not not generated. So, <clears throat> like there are actual points of interest. Uh, the creatures on it look designed, not farted out by an AI. <laughs> um, so, like, you still do research, but, like, the way you do it is instead of just, just scanning them, mm -hmm. a ring pops up and you have to kind of circle strafe around them to activate all of the little markers that pop up. I think up. I saw you doing that yeah. at one time. It, it's surprisingly satisfying, especially when they're on the run and you've got to find a way to, like, head them off of the pass to swoop around them to I, get a scan. I don't know. I, I'm not, uh... I'm not sure how I feel about games that just make you scan stuff, because I've... No, it doesn't just do the scanning. That's more of like a side thing to get extra money. It's like, because I've, I've still got <coughs> nasty flashbacks to uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah. No, it's actually more akin to, like, um, Beyond Good and Evil, where a good source of income was just, like, if you found animals on the planet, just snap a photo of them and send them in. Like, just as incidentals with your missions, you'll just come across new creatures and you'll want to scan two or three of them just as part of what you're doing. Okay. It's like It's like a side quest, but... And one of the things that I can actually uh, cheer Andromeda on for is all the side quests in that game were all still pointing you towards your centralized goal. None of it felt like you were gathering flowers for Grandma whilst trying to save the universe. And what? Uh, well, a lot of games, the side quests are like, I am on a quest to stop this ancient evil. Oh, but your chickens are missing. Okay, hang on a minute. You know, but... Oh, you mean like dust where you're just stuffing sheep into your pocket? That too. But in Andromeda, like, every side quest I did still felt like I was... I was pushing everything towards the centralized goal. Nothing felt like it was off the beaten path. It all felt important to, in some degree. Like, every side quest was a story mission, almost. So, I, I can appreciate that, and that's kind of how Starlink feels, but I've only I've only put a little bit into it. But it's also an Ubisoft open-world game. Ooh. In a good way. It's the good kind of Ubisoft I was about Ubisoft to say, oh, that's not, a, that's not something that you lead with. It's more uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and less Assassin's Creed Unity. And, uh, oh, I've also been playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Holy crap, that game's really good. And this is coming from someone who just hasn't found an Assassin's Creed game that really engages me. So, uh, although I accidentally made my character lesbian. Accidentally? Yeah, uh, a character was, like, stressing about something, and I, I, I said, oh, you look cute right now, because the way she was freaking out. And, uh, apparently my character leaned hard into that compliment, and, uh, then basically said... <gasps> Basically, then said, "Oh, I'm no, I'm calling you out, and I tend to get what I'm what I want to conquer about this woman." So I was like, "Oh, okay, I guess. All right, she's a lesbian now. Oh, you yeah. do you, Cassandra. Uh, I think uh, you're going to be doing her, if uh, I'm understanding this correctly. Uh, no, I think Cassandra's going to be doing Alessa, or not Alessa, Odessa. Blech. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I. I... Th that's the character I accidentally flirted with. But I, I like the say, fact that you can dis you, you just can incidentally uh, be uh, gay or straight in the game. Kind of like how I was Ooh. accidentally going down a gay path in Mass Effect 3 without realizing it. I was about it. to say, because I remember that was actually <laughs> something that I had heard complaints about with some of the Mass Effect games. Like, you can start off, you know, just saying, oh yeah, we should be friends. And immediately th your teammates are completely thirsty for you. Yeah, and thankfully I don't feel like that's the case because uh, she totally wasn't buying it initially. Like she was intrigued, but like not, but not, not drinking the Kool Aid as it were. Not drinking the Kool Aid. Yeah, but uh, <coughs> so far I'm getting a good Mass Effect vibe out of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Okay. <clears throat> it could be that I'm a sucker for Greek mythology, but I mean, I don't care. <laughs> and some of the animations are still kind of weird, but I mean, silver Mass Effect, so. Oh, yeah. Um, we could play some of the old NES games from the online mode at some point, you know? Like, we could maybe try to go through uh, the Legend of Zelda or something. Uh, you know, to be honest, I actually just played Legend of Zelda my own time. <laughs> so unless you want to do that, I mean... It's been years since I've beaten it, so, you know. Uh, let's see. Mad Carnage is the name of that game. Come here, you! <laughs> Um, I have uh, Lego DC Super Villains, which I love to play through multiplayer. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't played that one actually. It's it's good. It's funny. Well, it's I mean it's a it's a Lego game. Most yeah. of them are good and funny. It's a post the Lego movie Lego game that 
leans hard into that style of humor, so it's a good thing. Okay. Like, like the, the Lego games have absolutely absorbed the humor of the Lego movie and Lego Batman into themselves. I still haven't seen the the Lego Batman movie. Oh my god, it's so good. Like, you gave me a copy of the movie <laughs> a long time ago. I still haven't, like, sat down and watched it. Uh... Uh, Lark Dog, good evening. Zara, mm -hmm. goodbye. <laughs> uh, Pinky, why am I asleep? No, Pinky, I absolutely saw you. You popped me a couple times. I was in the middle of talking. I'm not gonna <laughs> drop everything and, like, completely diverge from current conversation to say, oh, you got me. Also, I talk too much, so, you know, it's on me. Whatever. <laughs> uh, I have Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, which, you know, is pretty cool. Uh... If you've never played a Disgaea game, I have Disgaea 1, but boy, is that a time sink? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I played Prinny. <laughs> Does that count as a Disgaea game? Yes. Sort of. Uh, I could make you play a bad Mega Man X game. <laughs> I have Mega what? Man X 7. No. <laughs> Nobody should have to play that. Uh, a good long game that I'd love to do on this channel is yep. L.A. Noir, Because we can oh. do that in, like, bursts. Because... I have I have been somewhat interested in that. My concern, though, the the description on the back does say it features nudity. Like, is it easy to censor or? Um, I know, I know that without spoiling anything, there's dead bodies in the game. Okay. Uh, a few of them are women. Okay. And a couple of them are Black Dahlia style murders where they're left like nude but chopped up. Dude. So like, there's some of that, but that that should be easy enough to to censor. Uh, depends on how good you are at like you know keyframing and whatnot. Uh, get good. I know just <laughs> enough to be annoying. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's, it's a really good one. Uh, and they're actually, the way they did the season pass was that, like, each of the seasons that the game has, because it, like, does three, se three individual seasons. Come parts, here, you. Uh, the season pass from the original Give game me the booty. added one or two new cases per season. And I never played those extra cases, but I played through all the original games, so I kind of know the base direction of everything. And it's not an open world game like Grand Theft Auto where there's a bunch of distractions. If anything, it's a very uh, linear story-based game that just happens to have a huge open city for you to drive from point A to point B, so you've got to kind of figure out where to go next. But there's a lot of really cool historical accuracies and one glaring historical inaccuracy, but it was an artistic choice. Uh -huh. uh, there's a movie set okay. that you go to that was this big Roman epic film that was shot... Uh, and a year before the game takes place, that studio was actually torn down in the real world. But in the game, that studio is still standing, but kind of decrepit, because, like, a really cool shootout happens there. Okay. So, like, you know, for, for artistic purposes, they kept that part in. <laughs> but, yeah. L.A. Noir is a good game, and, like, I really want to get into that one. <laughs> okay. Uh... I was saying just put faces on the body parts. I remember we actually used to, uh... Oh, who was it? There was someone, I, some guy named, uh, I think it was like Wayne Cohen. I forgot what, uh, what he was famous for, but he, um, oof. But there was a, um, I remember there was some other thing that we had to censor. Oh, I remember. It was the, uh, uh figure nipples during the, um, <laughs> during the Mario Kart episode. Yeah. Because I remember you... The thing that you said was, uh, yeah, the nipples look a little bit weird, and I was just like, okay, what's something weird? <laughs> and so I went to a, a, a chat that I frequented at the time, and I was like, hey guys, who's a weird celebrity? <laughs> and so, the people in the chat were like, Wayne Cohen, and I was like, I have no idea who that is. Okay, let's Google that, and just throw that into the, uh... Oh, I just realized two of the people on my team are gone, no wonder. <laughs> no wonder we're losing so bad. No, it's okay, you got this. It's fine! It's okay! I didn't realize until the last minute. I was like, oh man, they're pushing pretty hard. And then I look at the the top thing, and like two of the weapons on my side are X'd out. And I was like, oh. <laughs> hey, here's a thought. You could always put like a viewer's face <laughs> as, the, the, as the celebrity nipple cover of the episode. Oh my god. <laughs> ah, goodness. Uh. Loadout for the splat. See, I do like the the loadout for the splatling, like the the sub and the special, but um, I'm just not a big fan of the the splatling itself. Like, 
I like that it's the mini, so I get to fire it a little bit faster than a regular one, but I just, I don't like something where I have to charge up a shot or burst, then release it to actually attack. I want to be able to pull the trigger once and immediately start attacking whatever's in front of me. Yeah, so something like the, the Splatling where it's like, yeah, okay, just go ahead and charge up. Yeah, just, just charge up. Just hold it until something gets in front of you, then let go and, oh, I missed. Better charge up another shot. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, Brian, you seem to be on Hollow Knight. Yeah, I'm firing it up just to make sure that it's working. It just finished downloading a minute ago. I thought you already downloaded it. It was getting ready to download, but apparently it was like 99%. <sighs> the thing you like about the update is nothing. <laughs> I will say, I I do like the, at very least, the, the sub weapon on the, uh, the new sub on the new x -Blosher. I like that at least. This game is so cool, it has like varying backgrounds. Just for the menus. Very cool. I like it. Oh, and it comes with all the DLC. Nice. I will get back to that later. Oh, no, sir. Other games I'm trying to force him to play. Uh, I have uh, Diablo 3. Oh, dear God. Reaper of I Souls. I feel like that's going to take way too long, though. But the game is divided into chapters. And those chapters are divided into smaller chunks as well. Or it's divided into acts, which are divided into chapters. So it's like there are like set stopping points. You know? uh, one of the things I'd like to do is just to see how you feel about the game. To play basically the content of the demo version of the game. Which is from the beginning all the way up to a battle against King Leoric which was one of the bosses from Diablo 1, the Skeleton King. Okay. And uh, because the first act takes place basically in Tristram, or New Tristram, you even go back to the, the burned down village from the first game. Okay. And it kind of has you rehash a lot of the plot points there as your character is learning the lore of Diablo 1 and Diablo 2. So it like makes sense that you would return to these areas just to gather lost information. But, <clears throat> yeah, just getting from the... all the way from the, the base beginning of the game up to that first boss fight just to kind of see how you'd like it it's maybe two three hours tops worth of gameplay okay and that's assuming we don't like constantly grind which surprisingly diablo you don't have to grind the game has a perfect pace of, of difficulty curve and in areas where you feel like it's a bad curve to the difficulty if you instead kind of explore around the thing that's kicking your ass usually within five to ten minutes you've got the loot to take it out okay yeah. um it's, it's a little bit like um, like that when you hit the zone in Borderlands, like where you're constantly cycling weapons in and out in a way where it feels like you're just getting that slow creep up. It doesn't happen often in Borderlands, but Diablo 3, it's like a perfect balance. And it feels more like a twin-stick shooter or uh, like um, Gauntlet on crack. I don't know how I feel about a uh, something like that where I'm constantly having to switch weapons. Well, the with weapon switching frequency. isn't isn't so much. It's more the um, the uh, the items and stuff. And burn! Just throw the hammer. Oh, and it pinged off a wall. Well, darn. Uh, Try and gravity. Ru oh yeah, gravity rush. Yeah, that's a good one. Gravity I have. Rush uh, too. I also have six bucks. I also have the original gravity rush on PS4. It came out on Origin PS4? They re-released it, yeah. Gravity Rush Remastered. Ah. <clears throat> and you know what the worst part mm. is? I own both games, have not played them. How dare you. I even own the Vita version. How dare you. Yeah, there's a lot I haven't played that I own. Like, I own the really good oh, Digimon boy. RPGs that just came out. Uh -huh. Like, they feel like really good old-school PlayStation RPGs. Like, from the, from the golden era of PS1. Like... I okay. haven't played with them much. I, my problem is, is I keep getting these games, but I don't have the time to really delve into them because when I find one I like, it becomes the one I play. See, funny thing, you, you mentioned like the the golden days of PS One, and you you and some of the chat bring up things like um, uh, Ratchet and Clank and whatnot. Yeah. Like the only thing I ever really played on um, the first P on PS One was just like Capcom fighting games. 
So I've got stuff like Darkstalkers 3, Rival Schools. Uh, I'm trying to think, do I have Marvel's Capcom? I think I played it, but the PlayStation version is so awful. Yeah. Oh my god, like you... Ugh, oh, jeez. Like you're... Like, you played uh, some of the Marvel, the MVCs, right? I actually have a copy of Marvel Super Heroes for the Sega Saturn, which is an absolute god-tier masterpiece of a fighting game. It's in storage, though, so I don't know where it is. Because thing is, you remember how, like, the, um, the Versa series, it would always be, like, a, a tag team, you could have two yeah. people? The PlayStation 1, the PS1 version of MVC was so bad because of the, uh, the constraints of the PS1. Yeah, memory like, limitations. Yeah, they each person. Load multiple fighters. Yeah, each person could pick one person, and then the other, like, the team had to. Each player had to use someone that they weren't used to, or maybe didn't want. Yeah. Come here, you rascal! <laughs> so mean. <laughs> hey, if it's good enough for Donkey Kong, it's good enough for me. All right. Let's play a. They got a new mode in Fortnite right now, uh -huh. uh, where instead of it being a uh, hundred players, it's it's like a twenty v twenty match. Okay. But uh, it's not about eliminating the other team. It's about getting up to one hundred eliminations. Oh, okay. So like everybody respawns. You never lose your weapons. You keep everything. You just drop ammo when you die, which the other people can collect and they can keep fighting. And. <clears throat> And you're not, like, having to guard anything, but everyone gets pushed to the center anyway. And I happened to pick up, like, four turrets. <laughs> four of the, uh, the new mounted turrets. Yeah. And the enemy has kind of fortified themselves in. And I just sit in it, and I just start shooting the bottom of it. And apparently, I destroyed it in such a way where, like, four people, Shoot. I guess, forgot that they could Move. redeploy. So I just got, like, four kills all at once. It was really satisfying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <coughs> I kind of miss the zombie stuff they had going on, but I understand why why some people didn't like it. It's one thing to to like be hunting another player to suddenly be killed by monsters that ran over a hill and came at you in like a conga line dragged by the player you were hunting. <laughs> what? Because that was something I would do. I would get them following me, and then run into an area I knew the enemy was. And while I'm shooting them, I would like run around behind them so the zombies chasing me would then like aggro on them. You would just rile them up. And <laughs> yep. Just. Shake up that hornet's nest and have them following me. You would just poke them with a stick and then, like, <laughs> drag the hornets to the, uh... Yeah. Just think of, like, Galaxy Quest. Because my ship is dragging mines. <laughs> I don't remember that uh, part. Yeah, at the end of the film, that's how he beat the enemy. He, dra he flew through the minefield and all the magnetic mines were then following after him. And he, like, threw oh. down the gullet of the uh, enemy's ship. Okay. <laughs> Dude, there's so much of that I don't remember. I love that movie. Like, the only thing I remember is the ending with the timer, but I don't want to say because I don't know if someone's going to watch it and I'm going to ruin it and spoilers yeah. and whatnot, so I don't know if... Uh... Go watch Galaxy Quest if you're a fan of this show or I don't like you. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's Tim Allen's best movie. That is, I mean, pretty much everything else Tim Allen is just the Santa Claus, so that's not really a... Uh... And Buzz Lightyear. All right. Yeah, I know. I have that same problem. It's like, oh yeah, Tim Allen is Buzz Lightyear, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> Dude, I haven't watched a Disney movie in so long. I don't remember what, who plays what in those. As a father, I watch a lot of Disney. <laughs> uh, oh, Bloody Roar Two. I yeah, have Bloody Roar Two. Do you? Yes. Or as, uh, or as it was called in Japan and Europe, Beast Ariser Two. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the Japanese name is Beast Ariser. Beast Ariser. My wife's sounds... a huge fan of those games, so I bought her. Uh, Bloody Roar 2 on the PS3, and there it sits. So, yeah, I, I, I can always bring that. Oh, dear. Ah, shoot. So I'm going from a, a fast splatling to a, a significantly slower one. Good. <laughs> Dandy. Oh, man. Uh, sorry, I've not been paying much attention to the chat. The most... The only Bloody Roar I've played was a demo of the first one. It was in, like, one of those displays you would see in, like, Walmart. Yeah. And I just remember, a friend of mine had Bloody Roar. And the, um... Apparently the character of Fox was, like, the first time I'd seen a... Uh, holy crap, that's a lot of sniper. Huh. <laughs> oh my goodness, there are three snipers on that team. 
But the character of Fox was the first uh, first time I'd seen a, uh, a a trap, yeah, as it were. And the uh, I just remember when I was at um, you know a friend of mine told me, oh yeah, uh, Fox is actually a guy, and I'm thinking nah, that can't be right, is it? And she showed me the uh, instruction booklet, and sure enough, it said Fox is a guy. I'm like, okay, sure, why not? And there was so much that oh, I can't reach. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like uh, being at that. I don't much... like this level period. Well, neither do I. But I just have like really bad um, PTSD because the first time I played this map, it was right after I was doing super well with a roller. I hadn't seen this stage at all. It switches to this, and the entire other team had all snipers. So I'm trying to use a melee weapon against a full sniper team, and it is not working. <laughs> Eesh. Oof. Yikes, that panic. Wait, can I hit that guy? Nope. Ah, shoot. I also have a few of the PS2 and PS4 games, like, uh... Ooh. Maybe around New Year's, we could do Fantavision. That's that, uh, oh, fireworks, fireworks puzzle game? game? Yeah. It's a puzzle game? Yeah. I thought... See, I've never actually seen it. I always thought it was like a, a rhythm game. It's rhythm and puzzle. Like, uh, fireworks will launch from the bottom, uh -huh. and you have to... You can destroy three of the same color, but if you then pick up a power-up or one of the wild card pieces, you can jump colors, so long as you've already got three... Or as long as you have two plus the wild card, you can then jump to another color. And eventually, you're, like, getting eight or nine different chains of colors, like, jump... Because you only have three colors to worry about, but you'll, like hit three and then jump back to another color and back to another and eventually it's just utter chaos and okay. the multiplayer mode it's split screen there's multiplayer yes there's split screen but the split screen bar slides back and forth so like if you're doing really well you're taking up more and more of the screen so you have more chance for points and stuff but like the enemy can grab a power up that then flips the screen <laughs> it's oh, like a that's... crazy tug of war oh yeah it's a lot of fun though and, uh, like, for a PlayStation 2 launch game, it's still one of the best-looking video games I've ever played. Like, it it holds up really well, because I, I still play it every now and then. Um, I defy you to tell me what the game is about looking at the intro video to it. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the intro to the American Phantavision, it is deeply creepy. What? <laughs> it's like this evil little girl and a uh, weird mailman guy whispering things into her ear and... Whispering sweet nothings? I mean, she's like four, so that's even. Oh, that's creepier. that's weird. Okay, that's super and, weird. Like, then they have like this weird, like retro futurist TV that looks like it's out of Space Channel Five, and a kid that doesn't know how to hold an analog controller correctly. And uh, Fantavision's weird stuff, but then the game itself is fine. But. Okay, you know what I was actually thinking in regards to um a like I was thinking about doing the same um same thing we did last year, like just throw in a fighting game, you know, just something. Like, for the, the New Year's Eve thing, or the end of the yeah. year. Uh, you know, just something where we can kind of turn off our brain. We don't have to really think too much about. Yeah. And just do, like, a sort of a review of the past year. Like, what uh, yeah. you know, what we did last year. You know, what was your favorite game, least favorite. Uh, something that was surprisingly good. Something that was surprisingly bad. Yeah. So I have so a few of those this year. Uh, like, this year has been a year of it, uh, surprises and really bad disappointments. I've had more games get returned, like, quickly, because they were just, ugh, this uh, year than any other year. Not saying any names, but, uh, Fallout 76? Uh, no, but, really? um, no, it, uh, it rhymes with schmoll schmaliber. <laughs> really? I did not like the new Soul Calibur. Really? It felt like I was playing Soul Calibur 4 all over again. I think it looks ugly. The loading is garbage. No, I will agree with you there. The loading is Super bad. They're all like powered by Unreal, Arr! and then I look and it's like all the character models look like they were ripped out of Soul Calibur 3 on the PS2, and the <laughs> backgrounds are real pretty. But those that, those backgrounds being pretty is what sacrifice the the loading times, and like I don't know, it just it it felt bad. I didn't it didn't like it at all. It was almost as bad as in, was it Soul Calibur was that a four or five where they just say the word malfested every other word. Five. Yeah. Oh my god. I felt like I was playing five all over again, and I didn't want to do that. Honestly, I haven't found one I've enjoyed quite as much as the PSP one. It's like the PSP, uh, like, chain of something, I don't know. No, that was, uh, Broken Destiny? Broken Destiny, that's it. 
uh, I liked Broken Destiny and then Soul Calibur 3. Those are those are my Soul Calibur games. And I just haven't found one that has that balance to it. I can, I can take anybody on in Broken Destiny, but I just... Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't for me. <clears throat> but there's been a lot of that this year. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. I actually liked, uh, for the most part, I liked uh, Soul Calibur 6. I was just glad that I got Soul Calibur 6 pre-owned. I able to return it. Can't even remember what I bought in, in place, but I bought something much better. I think I bought Disgaea 1. <clears throat> but, uh, the problem could be me, because I have changed in my taste in fighting games, and I don't know, I'm just an old man now. You're an old fart. Living in a world I no longer understand. You look like you're spraying cheese whiz everywhere. <laughs> Just thought you should know. This is how we make Philly cheesesteaks in uh, Inkopolis. I am married to someone from Pennsylvania, and if you put cheese whiz on a Philly cheesesteak, you will be murdered. <laughs> and they will not find your body, because it will go into the next batch of cheesesteak. Oh my. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, never mind. The, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I, I kept seeing, like, different, um... Well, I'll take the back. Not different. I, I make it sound like I saw a wide variety of... I remember I saw one of... It was some cooking show. It was something on uh, Food Network. Where they would have two different, um... Two different restaurants that claim they have the best whatever. Yeah. And one particular episode was... Uh, cheesesteaks. Ah, that's fighting words right there. And... <laughs> and the thing was, they kept saying that, like... It wasn't a quote unquote authentic one unless it had cheese whiz. Which I didn't. Now, I don't know any better. I mean, my, uh. You know, my exposure to a cheesesteak is in a hot pocket, so. <laughs> I think hot pockets have ruined my, my taste on cheesesteaks as well, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I don't know. I didn't look at the the uh, map. I think that's us. Yeah. At first, I wasn't sure just because, like, um, it didn't show the danger on either side, so I was like, oh, this might be kind of even. Yeah. It was close, though. And it, was, it was closer than I thought, yeah. I saw a whole bunch of yellow. I thought, oh, maybe that's a, a steamrolling because I didn't see the little danger, but no, I guess it was closer than I thought. Okay. I also noticed a question up there that I was wondering if you were going to get to it. What's that? Someone uh, wanted to know if you had uh, asked me about White Day. What's White Day? I don't know. That's just what one of the questions was there. White Day? So I thought maybe it was something you had discussed and were going to surprise uh, me with or whatever. I don't know. White Day? I oh, thought that's what it said. Let's see. There it is. Uh, it says, I'm back just wondering if you told Brian about White Day. It's, uh, Where's that? Romero? There, right oh, below. White Day? Yeah. I don't know what that is. <laughs> the only thing about White Day I know, there's a, um... I know there's a holiday in Japan called White Day. I don't actually know what it is or what people do, though. <laughs> so I don't... I, also I, I know of it in name only. Uh, the new Spyro, I have not had a chance to play yet. I, uh... I actually haven't even picked it up yet. Um, been kind of busy lately with stupidness. But, uh... I've been playing a hell of a lot of Spider Spider Man. But didn't you already platinum that? I did, but then the DLC came out, and oh unlike a lot of games, the DLC packs are nice self-contained stories, but they're interconnected. So like oh. one, br the DLC pack one bridges right into DLC pack two, and like the 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 ending of that affects the beginning of the other one. There's no like different endings or anything, but like <clears throat> it, the the DLC doesn't exist in a vacuum like a lot of games have. Oh, okay. <clears throat> So I'm, I'm about to finish the, the second one, but I'm kind of actually spacing it out so that I can jump straight from the second one into the third one when it launches this month. Uh, but I can say for 25 bucks, the City That Never Sleeps DLC stuff has been pretty good. It basically just makes a lot of, or adds a few more layers to the fights and then is just a series of follow the leader, unlock the next story chunk bits. But honestly, I'm okay with that. So I will say I, I am getting so tired of I can't even remember her name now, but there's a character in the game that's basically a psychotic YouTuber. What? That is, like, 
holding people hostage and demanding you do challenges for her and getting to get viewers and stuff. Like what? she has a bunch of thugs that are that are like I don't know, strapped the bombs or some nonsense, and you've got to like I don't know what I don't know how she got all the thugs, but basically it's you go to this place, fight all the thugs stealthfully, and stealthfully skew. Oh yeah, sometimes it's stealth, sometimes it's like for show. Like uh, but each time there's like a um, a photo bomb area where you have to do a thing at a specific spot and then hit the button at right at the right moment to get a good photo op to get even more points and. You, you're completing them just so you can track ra down her whereabouts. Because the first time so, she was claiming she had a hostage, and you tracked down the hostage, and it was just her. So how does... Okay, so then how does taking photos get you to her location? Well, the photos don't. It's just like completing the challenges. You're tracking her broadcasts as you're partaking in the broadcasts. Okay. But, of course, uh, J. Jonah Jameson is, like, calling you out for participating in these stupid, silly stunts and stuff. Right, because he's a dick. Yeah. Well, I mean, he also said that you're thinking with your web shooters when thinking about Black Cat, so... Right, as, <laughs> as I would. Yeah, that's the other thing. There, there's surprisingly more mature content in the uh, in the DLC stuff. Like, they, they tackle some subjects that they that they don't tackle in the basic game. And okay. I'm kind of impressed by the, the uh, level of maturity. Like, a little more violent, a little more dark, a little more sexy, to be honest. Okay. So, yeah, no, I'm... I, that's, that's not a bad thing. Spider-Man is an excellent game, and, like, I'm not gonna say it's my game of the year, but I'm not gonna say it's not. So, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure yet. I'll, I'll I'll check back at the end of the year on that one, because there are a couple of contenders there. In case something uh, really special comes up in the next, uh, like, a week or so? Yeah, because I've, I've got a couple of games in mind for a game of the year. Spider-Man is definitely in the running. Um... <clears throat> I'm trying to decide if a fixed game that came out, like, last year counts. <laughs> Snow Man's Sky uh, is now a great game. Well, I was going to say it's something that we've played on the show. Oh, something we played on the show. Okay. Yeah. Cause if it, it, oh, I guess I'll have to bring Spider-Man over then to make oh, it count. Oh, what's the, what's the best game you've played this year on our channel? Oh, Barbie no Horse Man's, Adventure. No Man's Sky? Cool, let's just ignore that part of the question. I already... The worst part is I already know what my most surprising game is, but I'm going to keep that one yeah, under hold, my hat. Cause... Yeah, hold, hold on to all that. I have a couple answers of my own, but I, I don't want to uh, No guess one will guess. <laughs> Someone's going to guess. Someone will probably guess. Just <laughs> don't say if you're right, if they're uh, right or wrong or not. Uh, shoot, I don't know what's... Uh, yeah, let's use this before I, before I switch to the x washer. Not only are they the same people that made Ratchet and Clank, uh, the people who made Spider-Man also made Spyro. So, you know, crossover, Spyroderman. Oh, uh, Mons, the person that you uh, said brought up White Day. Oh, yeah. An Asian horror game that has folk tales of ghosts. I do remember, Mons, I do remember you brought it up that one night. I had actually forgotten the title. <laughs> Sorry, I only, I only remember White Day as a, um, as a Japanese holiday. I do not actually remember the game itself. I'll have to look into that one. Um, there's a new horror game that just came out based on, uh, I want to say it's Thai folklore. It's called Home Sweet Home. It's one I want to look into, but maybe not for the channel because it looks pretty intense. I was about to say, yeah. you, you already know how I am with uh, with horror games. That's Yeah. Honestly, the only horror game I would want to get you to play on this channel is the one that I know will never, ever happen. PT? Uh, well, actually, okay, PT's good, but no, I would just want him to whip out a classic Fatal Frame. Ugh. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, look, look. I will not play a Fatal Frame game. Okay. But I would not object to watching you play it. See, I would do that, because I know Fatal Frame 1 pretty well and 2 pretty well. 3 still gets me from time to time, because, I don't know, there's some stuff about some of the ghosts in 3 that just really bug me. Is 3 the one that had, like, the big towering ghost that would chase you? Yes. And you couldn't kill it? Okay, that was 3? I think. I well, there's sure. also the tall, skinny one in Fatal Frame 1. Not that one. I, I remember the thing that I'm talking about was not in it's the like first a, one. It's like a cluster of them, like a bunch of arms wrapped around someone. I don't remember. That's the big one from 3. But, uh... Because 3 actually features, uh... The girl from Fatal Frame 1. The older brother of the girls from Fatal Frame 2, because they retconned it. That, that one no longer took place in the 60s, it took place in the 80s. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And Fatal Frame 1 takes place in the early 90s, and 3 takes place in the thousands, even though no one seems to have aged a day. Uh, but you play a woman whose husband died, and 
you are working with the girl from the first one who's, you know, had a loss, and you play the brother of the girls from Fatal Frame 2, who was lost there. So it's like, it, it deals with, with... With loss? Loss, and mourning, and things like that. And means? And, uh, not that mean. Uh, not that loss? I will say, though, uh, Fatal Frame 3 has the best malice in the entire series. What they usually malice? refer to the villains as, like, the, the, main, the main ghost as being just a being of malice. Oh, uh, okay. But, um, at least that's how I remember it, so that's just how my brain refers to the, the big bad of each game. But usually it's a, a woman that has been abused in some way by the cult that she's part of, or the religion she's part of. But in Fatal Frame 3, like, by the time you learn her whole backstory, and, like, what led up to her just snapping and becoming the rage monster that she is, you're like, you go, girl. <laughs> you, you kill everything. I'll help. Let me get my camera. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I, I really like... Fatal Frame 3 uh, boss. Well, I'll take like the final boss is a pain in the ass. You went from I love the boss to oh, there's I like such the, a I like pain the big the bad ass. the big bad ghost girl, but like you beat her and then there's another ooh surprise and that one is oh I hate it because you always walk so slow in Fatal Frame. Right. It's practically sidestepping, you know, and this guy like spins around you fast and then dives across. Oh, good. Yeah, and it's like you can you can do it, but. It helps if you just approach that fight with a shit ton of the top tier film and just okay. never use it throughout the game. It's weird. And just all the healing items. I keep forgetting that the the ammo in that game is just film. Yeah. Oh goodness. <clears throat> Korean horror game takes place at school. It's haunted. It has time based elements. Ooh. Now the thing is, Mons. Um. Uh, when it comes to horror games. Me personally, I am a colossal bitch, and I cannot play horror games. I will lose my shit. Like, you remember when? Remember when you got me to play Prey? Yeah. It's not even a horror game, and I was losing yeah, it. Yeah, it only starts as a horror game. Because, <laughs> God, like, I don't know if you played the most recent Prey, but it's like the enemies are are mimics. They'll they're these weird black spidery. They they look like like almost ink monsters. Yeah. But in spider shape, and they'll just you know, take the form of something in the office, mm -hmm. in the areas. So you could go up to something, it'll just become a monster, jump scare you, and attack you. Yeah, it's like the head crabs from Half-Life right. had a baby with those uh, treasure chests in every RPG that tried oh, to attack God. you. God, mimic chests. <laughs> but the, um... Yeah, like, it was already bad enough, but I could kind of mitigate it then, because, yeah. you know, just take the... Well, whatever the uh, melee weapon was, a hammer or a crowbar or whatever, and just whack everything in the room, but then they started disguising themselves as items, like actual pickup items, so I remember going up to one of them, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna grab this, I okay, that's it, I'm out. Because <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, this is ammo, I can just pick it up without any worry, and it's trying to kill me now, cool, and I'm done with this game. I, I couldn't do it, I mean, that was... Ooh. Oh dear, oh, oh god, oh god, please no. But yeah, horror <coughs> games, mm, I'm... I'm a little less uh, apprehensive about watching someone else play it. Like, I'll, I'll occasionally watch, like, some Let's Players play horror games. Sometimes. Yeah. But even then, that's very, um... Sparingly. Not something I will do with great frequency. <sighs> See, and I, I like the occasional horror game, but I actually enjoy playing them myself. Like, I don't like watching other people play horror games quite as much, because it's not as fun for me. Uh, I can think of a few horror games that I would love to play, like uh, Franbo is one I'd love to play. Um, it is oh, a I've surrealist one. Yeah, I have seen that one. the little girl who takes the pills and it, yeah. it alters Ooh, her world. That was... Have you seen the entire game? No. Oh, that's a good one. Is it? Yeah. Uh, it's, like, right up there with, like, Alice Madness Returns in terms of having a surprisingly good plot that <coughs> takes a, a, a 180 near the end that makes perfect sense and is so good. See, I have Also, uh, Alice Madness Returns is a game we should play. I actually have that. <coughs> That's such a good one. See, I have... From what I've seen on, um, on that Frambo game, it seems like less of a horror game and more just a mind trip game. Not necessarily yeah. scary, just really twisted. Now, not that that's a bad thing. I can... I'm oh, fine with... It goes into... It, it actually ebbs and flows, but, like, it starts oh. off normal with, like, shocking moments. Uh -huh. Then it goes into, like, full-on terror moments. Oh, And good. then it goes into a whimsical, weird, kind of off 
area with like the occasional shot of of kind of to remind you and then it starts coming back down and Ooh. as it comes back down from that whimsy area it starts getting darker and darker to the end and uh, it's good stuff An another good one uh, but honestly it's one that I have had trouble with was um, never ending nightmares oh yeah no I would not be able to no, do that one. No, that one that one actually causes me problems. I've, I haven't had a game had a moment happen where I'm just like, oh, oh, oh! And it's the part where he like reaches into his hand, grabs a vein, and then just unzips his oh, arm yeah. by tearing it out. I see. Oh, oh it makes God. my arm itch thinking about it. Oh, yeah. God. Merry yeah. Christmas. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, tis the season. <laughs> Come here, Playable elbows. anxiety. I like that description. <laughs> Okay, time to, time to not be here. Yeah. I actually still have a copy of PT on my uh, my PlayStation 4 Pro, oh, so... Oh, God. <laughs> Whew. Look, if, if you want to play PT, I will be happy to watch you play it from the other end <coughs> of the room. Tell you what, because that game is so short, and it's like, it's basically better as just a long experience, we should stream that one sometime. I'll play oh, it. Oh, God. I, I will bring you a, a plushie to hug. <laughs> I have plenty of plushies to hug. I will bring you a plushie that is safe to have on camera to hug. I have a couple that are safe to hug on camera. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I will bring you a safe to hug plushie that's not covered in dust because you haven't touched it in months. Look, you. <laughs> I will find a way to judge you. You already judge me. I think I have Visage, but oh. I haven't played it. Oh, that's... Ugh. Oh, I know another game I just got that I'd love to try. What? Um, it's a full-motion video adventure game called Observer. Oh, Night Trap? Uh, no. Uh, though if you want corny no. full-motion video game, I do have Roundabout. What's that? It is a driving game. Oh, I remember with you With a showed taxi me. that just... Con or not a taxi, a limo that's just constantly, constantly spinning. Constantly drifts? Yeah. Uh, you showed me the trailer for that, yeah. I, it's I do remember. Ridiculous, and I love everything about it. The acting is horrendous. The Shoot. main character is extremely hot. There was another game someone recommended. Um, Valiant Hearts. I think I had that. Yeah, the one about the war. Yeah. Um, it's not something that we'd be able to do like in the immediate future, because you know, after dust we would be doing um. Oh, what's it? Uh, oh shoot! I'm. I forgot to change out my glass. I'm not using the ink saver glasses. Eh, crap. I do know the one VR game I want you to play that's not just me making you play a stupid game. What? I, I really want you to play Super Hot VR. Oh, that's the thing with the uh, the slow mo and the. Yeah. It's way better when you actually have room to move. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Like regular Super Hot is an excellent game, and they're two totally different games, which I like. Like they're not the same levels. It's just the same gameplay. <laughs> Doom VR is all right too, but it can it can cause some VR sickness if you're not careful. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I was I was editing the um some of the episodes this morning and you sound rough. Yeah, it's those. it's the weather change and all kinds of other stuff has been going on, so my throat's a little uh, a little shot. Plus, uh, I've been calling people today about. Uh, an upcoming launch, so I've got like. Uh, is it Smash? Yeah. But it's Smash. I'm just gonna start calling people, let me smash, and then just hang up on them. <laughs> Baker, that... let me smash. Please. Gonna let you smash at 11 p.m. Thursday, click. <laughs> Baker, please. Please, let me smash. Oh dear god! Ooh, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. But the, um. Oh, it... oh I thought I said Umami Gamer. <laughs> no. <clears throat> Oh, right, there's a... I saw a huge chunk of ink on that side. I was like, wait a minute. And I, I remembered we can't get to that spot easily just yet. Come here, little fella. Ooh, there we go. Uh. 
Excuse me, sir. Have you met our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? <laughs> what? <laughs> While I was waiting to come in today, or waiting to, to come on over after work, I uh, was sitting in my car for a minute. Uh -huh. And I'm like looking at something I'd bought, and oh, this guy taps on my window, and I just look at him, and he's like gesturing me to roll it down. And I like, roll down my window, and he's like, hey, what you got there? I'm like, it's something I bought. Can I help you? Like, well, I'm just asking. It's a nice watch. Thanks. Can I help you? And he reaches into my car window to tap my watch. He's like, what's that do? He's like, excuse me, I don't know who you are. Please don't reach into my car. What do you want? I'm surprised you were even still asking. I would have rolled up the window on his arm at that point. I was about to, but I didn't want him to, like, punch my car or anything. And then he starts saying, oh, well, I just wanted to say God bless you and all this. And my brain is like, you are barking up the wrong tree, guy. And apparently all he wanted to do was wash the windshield of my car for a few bucks. I'm like, dude, I don't carry cash on me. You should have led with that. And, and then I'm just... And also, window also up. you don't offer to wipe, to clean someone's windows by reaching into the car. Yeah. <clears throat> That's... Oof. But it's Mississippi. I try not to get aggressive with any stranger because you never know who's a, a packing crazy person. True. Yeah. True. I sometimes forget where we live. And... Oof. As somebody who is Mexican, Native American, I do not take my whiteness for granted because you never know when you might come across a colorblind person or someone who can just smell the minority on you. So, so I hey, just try what? not to. What's guess up? what? Pyro says we'd make a cute gay couple. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, Pookie. <laughs> That's okay. My, have... late, my late best friend wanted a piece of me so bad it <laughs> broke his heart. I've had so many times when, like, a coworker would be calling someone that, uh, like, a family member or a, or a spouse or someone, and I would <laughs> so just want to say, like, as they're saying, I love you, I just want to cut back with that line. Just yeah. Turn, I love you, you used too, to. <laughs> Anytime I was on the phone with my ex-wife back in the day, anytime I oh, would yeah. end it, you would yell that, too. Oh, yeah, I did. She would yell it back, though, so... <laughs> Okay, uh, when, when my daughter was born, she was very jaundiced and had uh -huh. uh, very uh, slanted eyes for a baby and very thick black hair. So, of course, the very first baby photo I sent, I don't know if you remember, I sent it to you yeah. and I was like, uh, can you explain this? <laughs> and I got just got this frantic text back. Was, oh, God, I didn't do it, I swear. And I was like, you're, you're going to call my, my wife an it? <laughs> you know, I was, just, I was giving him a hard time because I knew why my daughter... Had a, a different skin tone than I was expecting, but... I promise, though. <laughs> <laughs> I had to torture him a bit. But yeah, my uh, my my, uh, my best friend, the one that passed away, uh, when he moved to Vegas, he gave me a hug when he left, and then he just grabbed my ass just as hard as he could, and he's like, I had to try. And then he left. <coughs> so, yeah. Oh, shoot, I didn't mean to fall down the, the, the ramp. I didn't want to go down there. Oh, God! I made a horrible mistake! I went to one of his drag shows one night, and a guy uh, was, like, to his credit, I've never had someone try so hard to pick me up in my life. You know, offered to buy me drinks. I don't drink. Wanted to step outside for a smoke. I don't, you don't smoke. smoke. Uh, offered me fresh air. He just really don't wanted do to air. get me alone to talk to me. Oh, God! I, at the time, I had just gotten divorced. I, my wife was, like, my ex-wife now was, like, my first real relationship in life. So I didn't know how to politely turn anyone down <laughs> let alone be like you're barking up the wrong tree guy i'm sorry you know i was definitely flattered though i'm not one of those guys like oh my god what's going on now nah, uh -uh. i it was absolutely flattering but uh somebody that i had earlier in the day pretended to be their boyfriend to get a guy off of her like because this guy was constantly hitting on her at my old casino job mm -hmm. and i just stepped up and, hey babe is this guy bothering you <laughs> hey, babe. and she knew what i was doing and immediately leaned into it <clears throat> She stepped up, threw her arm around me at the bar, and was like, no, he's with me. Oh, wow. We started dating right after that, too, so apparently I did something right. Me and the girl, not me and the guy. They're just... I just squished them. <coughs> it's okay. It'll grow back. <laughs> like it wasn't even a... I didn't even explode the thing. I just kind of nudged him gently and killed him. Uh, I'm from Florida, so I will never go back to Florida. <laughs> I, uh, I'm afraid if I show up, y'all will want me to be your King Florida man, and I just, it's not a responsibility I'm willing man. to bear right now. 
Uh, yeah, I was born in Panama, and they were like, let's get him out of here ASAP. He'll run this place. So... Oh, I almost got that guy if I just popped it like a second sooner. <laughs> they had to life flight me to Kiesler, and they killed me. Okay, though, I survived. <laughs> I stubbed his toe and he died. I think that is uh, absolutely what happened. I, I just went, boink, oh god. Ugh, it is weird doing, you know, using all those other weapons, then coming back to the x -Splosher. It's like coming home. Ooh. Oh man, I missed the x -Splosher. Yeah, I'm from uh, Panama City, Florida, which means a good portion of where I was born was severely damaged this year in a massive hurricane so oh. hurricanes just chase me <laughs> the first year i when i first moved back or when i first moved to arizona mm -hmm. in the early 90s my, my dad who was a former hurricane hunter is like well at least there's not gonna be any hurricanes here and i shit you not that year a hurricane went right up the baja and we got tropical depression weather in tucson arizona <laughs> oh boy oh yeah and my dad was loving it because that weather does weird things in the desert. Lightning goes bonkers. <laughs> and uh, he's just out front staring at, at the mountains as lightning is just constantly striking the mountains. And he's watching where the mountains are catching fire from all the lightning strikes. Because you can see it, you know? Yeah. And uh, there's a palm tree like a house length away. Because we lived in a little duplex. Okay. Basically like double the length of your house. Okay. And uh, right in the middle of the neighbor's yard was a palm tree. And a bolt of lightning hits it. Oh. My dad is standing right there. And he had, like, boiling hot tea that just freshly had ice poured into it. So he dumps that on himself and freaking out. So he's got both ice and super hot liquid on him at the same time. The uh, tree caught fire from the inside. So they eventually had to come out and cut it down to keep it from reigniting. And it kept lighting back on fire. I miss crazy, wacky Arizona weather. Uh, I probably should not be at that point right there. Super Smash Brothers ultimate themed Splatfest heroes versus villains. Oh god, oh god, oh god. I mean I'm team villains, clearly. What are you? What is that what the That's what that's what uh Splatoon 2 News just said. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, uh, I was not aware of this. Uh, yeah. Come here, buddy. You might want to get out of here. <laughs> Damn right, you better run. I mean I I'm I'm villains all the way. I mean Oh, I don't know. I would have to get another look at the roster, but uh I, ha I can't think of a series where I like the hero more than the villain. Like Really? Yeah, like, I... Like any oh, of, God! Any of the, the, the comics that I read, the villains are great. Um, though, I, I, I like a good reformed villain, too. You know, like okay. a good anti-hero. Like, IDW Megatron, who is, a, is an Autobot now, is the best version of that character ever. Like, there's never been a better version of that, of that, that character at all. Oof! Yeah, I I would have to look at the um, at the actual roster again, but yeah, Discord from I'll MLP. Probably... There you go. What? Uh, people mentioning villains. Uh, Pyrozukin was like Discord from MLP. You know, the actor who plays Discord has gone on record as to say stating that he's basically, as far as he's concerned, Discord is his Q character. So Discord is Q. So obviously better. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot of blue. That's a lot of blue. Hi! Bonk! <laughs> no! That person took a lot. Just kinda... I just like gently nudge him like, Hey, what's up? How's it going? Ooh, okay, you know what? We just got these uh, plushy turtle shells from, uh, or Koopa shells from Mario in my store. Mm hmm and when you bump them, they do the really satisfying Mario Kablonk noise. The plop sound? Yeah, like they hit something. Yeah. And I just, I want one, so I can just throw it at people. Oh my god. The thing is, is like every, I think it's eight or ten times, it does the one-up noise. Oh. Can you turn that off? The one-up noise? Yeah. No. Uh. Oh. That way, when I randomly throw it at somebody, I just get Kerplonk. Or one-up, who knows. Or the ding. Yeah. It's empty! I have coke. I have coke and I have more stuff in the fridge. Okay. I just feel like I just feel like being unnecessarily angry. 
So be I don't ir like irrationally angry at an empty bottle. I don't like putting my coke in the fridge. It clumps up, makes it hard to snort. <laughs> You, uh, you looking for a fight right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, for the record, my drug of choice. Cardboard boxes? Moon pies! Little tiny ones. <laughs> Gonna open one real Can quick. Can you not do that, please? <laughs> Jesus. I'm terrible, I like know. Like, you're not even doing that to my ear, and it's grating. I get full ability on clothes. Uh, a lot of patience. Just a whole lot of patience. Um, I'll probably explain it after a, a, a little bit more detail after this match. Shoot, I keep forgetting to change to my glasses with the um, the ink saver on it. Also, Pyro Zukin, John Delancey is always a win. My sister got to meet him, and I've never forgiven her for it. <laughs> she got to meet him and uh, Richard Dean Anderson on the same day, and. I didn't get to go to this meeting, and it was stupid. It was stupid. <clears throat> I think I may have told that story before. Uh, I don't think you have. Uh, my sister was briefly a model, and during that time, she got cast as an extra on a UPN show called Legend, which was a like a, a Western show starring Richard Dean Anderson and his inventor buddy, played by John Delancey, and they were kind of like a sheriff, but they used, like, forensics and, and science and basically MacGyvering to okay. solve all of their uh, problems. It was an okay show. It only lasted like a season and a half because old Tucson Studios burned to the ground and it burned to the ground the day before my sister was supposed to film her scene. Oh, jeez. She was going to be just... It was uh, originally picked as an extra, but then she got picked to uh, have the walk-on role as John Delancey's illegitimate daughter. Oh. Uh, that he had with uh, a Mexican woman. And... She was going to be just kind of dropped on his doorstep. <clears throat> but, of course, studio burned down, show was canned, and that never happened. So, But she met she met Richard Dean Anderson and John Delancey, and I didn't, and I'm still grumpy. Yeah, I was kind of hoping... I kind of hoping whoever was shooting there for a sec was going to join in trying to knock out the hammer, or not the hammer, the um, bomb, but they didn't. Uh, yeah, I, I like William Afton from Five Nights at Freddy's. He's actually a really good sinister villain, mostly due to the work of his voice actor. Because prior to that, he was just the creepy purple guy. But actually having him get a voice in Five Nights at Freddy's, uh, what's a sister location and, and pizzeria simulator and all that, like, yeah, no, now, now I, I get it. Okay. Um, villains that I like, uh, and I'm going to call him a villain because... He is. Cave Johnson from Portal 2. Uh, really? Yeah, I, I gotta call him Ooh. a villain. Just because of because of what he did as a scientist. Like, But it's for science! Yeah, and that's why he gets a pass. But Sometimes he's... you just gotta throw science at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, but given what he did to Carolyn, I, you know, I gotta, I gotta call him a villain on that one. But, uh... But credit to his actor for refusing to record the dialogue for the thing he did to Carolyn because he thought it sounded way too much like a sexual assault and he just wasn't comfortable performing that particular scene with her. Okay. Um, so, uh, J.K. Simmons is awesome. He's always a win. Uh, but, yeah. I actually can't see him doing those farmer's insurance commercials without just imagining that it's Cave Johnson it's Cave selling me the Johnson? insurance. <laughs> Cave Johnson here. <laughs> just, uh... Not gonna lie to you, we're throwing insurance at the wall to see what sticks. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. Giant robot take over your facility and kill everybody in it? We cover that. <clears throat> Just be sure to throw it in a fire. <clears throat> I'm Cave Johnson, we're done here. <laughs> oh, hey, I leveled up. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, other, um, other video game villains that I think are great. Uh, the Kane from the Legacy of Kane series. Though, he might just be an anti-hero, but freaking love Kane. Though, the best villain in there is gonna be Mobius, because he's such a manipulative bastard, and I love it. And he's so weaselly with the way he talks. He's very frail-sounding, until he's not. He turns off the frail voice. Yeah, a lot of people you know. usually sound one way until they're not. Yeah. Just, I'm just saying, like, he's really good at coming across as this 
feeble old man with a few magic tricks until you realize he's been in control the whole time and knows exactly what's going down, you know? Mm. You think they may try to kill you? You needn't fear them, of course. They're a match for you, but do what you have to do. Yeah, you know, just the way he brings out the Sinister is like, oh yeah, no, those are my guys. They won't understand why you're here. They're going to try to kill you on your way out. Okay. You don't have to worry about them because you're clearly god-tier powerful and they're fleshy meat bags, but, you know. But it's kill cool. Kill as many as you need to. Just kill them. Yep. It's fine. <laughs> and, like, that's his own men he's talking about. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, no, nah, love Mobius. Like, his introduction in Soul Reaver 2 is, like, to kind of open with a pun. Like, where am I is the usual question. In your case, when might be more apt? Because you went through time. Okay. Yeah. Of course, Raziel knows who it is right away. Just grabs him by the throat and slams him up against the wall. <laughs> okay. He goes to use his, like, magical sword to kill him, and it turns off, and he's like, okay, if you prefer, I use my bare hands to kill you. So, yeah. I love... That's one of the games where I'll do the voice acting on my way over here just to... Yeah, refresh myself. But, uh... <clears throat> I had actually completely forgotten that, uh, this loadout has the... What's up? I'm just reading the stuff while you're talking. Oh, sorry. Oh, shoot. I was supposed to give an explanation about, uh, stuff. Hi! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I did forget to, um... Uh, to explain about the uh, the chunks and whatnot, how to get uh, abilities on stuff. Okay. Uh, tell you what, the the stages are about to rotate in a second. We'll we'll end the stream about there, but before I actually end stream, I'll explain like how the um how I usually get the uh, like filled out stats. Oh, yeah, they did ask about that, didn't they? Yeah, they did ask about that, like, a very long time ago. Sorry, I'm a bit of a wordsmith. I tend to just stretch out my stories and descriptions of things. <clears throat> Oof! How about you, though? While we're while we're waiting, do you have any other villains that you, uh... Villains that I like? See, that's the thing. I'm, I'm kind of a goody two-shoes. I'm usually not a big fan of villain characters. Now, I will kind of second what someone said regarding, um, uh, William Afton being a villain, just because I feel like... Like, again, I'm not a big fan of horror games in general, and I also feel like Jump Scare is literally the cheapest form of horror. Oh, yeah. But... Boo! He does a... Oh, God! But uh, Scott Cawthon does put, like, so much lore into it that while I give precisely zero shits about the game itself, I do love the story behind it. Mm -hmm. So I like Pizzeria Simulator because it's actually a fun game. <laughs> See, I, that's something like that I probably would enjoy until it got to the part where you actually have to do the stupid scary crap. Yeah. Because the, um... Like, one game that I did want to play, just because it really wasn't much of a, a scary game, for the most part, was uh, that FNAF World one. Oh, just that one's great. Just because it's such a, a goofball RPG. Because <coughs> I remember just watching uh, a GT Live play it, and just that sort of, like, quick fire. Yeah. Over and over, go, 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 pick it, pick your attack, and they <laughs> attack back immediately, and it's, it looked really interesting, but... It is a heavy dose of, of just prevailing balls-out insanity with, like, a chewy center of, like, deep wrongness. There's just a sense of, of something that's not okay about the world itself, and I love it. Well, you know my feeling about balls-out stuff. Clean hands only? What? Ah, oh, goodness. They are, um, Scott Cawthon did announce that there's another game coming out called, uh, Into Madness, and it's gonna be like a sequel to FNAF World. It's gonna be more of a rapid-fire, weird, random games kind of game. Okay. Hmm. Uh, which fits, because there is that one very weird section of FNAF World where it's just got that giant kind of off foxy face in the background you just hear Scott saying be sure your step into the heart of madness just over and over and over again are you talking about the um you, you mean the one the, like the one jump scare that uh, FNAF World had yeah the, uh, that was actually I don't think that was meant to be something other than a parody of the uh those dumb like 
creepypasta, like, Sonic.exe games. Yeah, that's what it absolutely was, but he still added this great sense of unease to the whole sequence, and I love that. Like, even when he's spoofing his own stuff, he still does it well. It's like, with, even when Stephen King is phoning it in, or on a whole lot of drugs, he still writes good books. Okay. They don't adapt well to film, but, you know. <clears throat> Unless it's Shawshank Redemption, they adapted really well. Was... that Stephen King? Yeah. Really? Yes. I didn't think he did something like that. Yep. Shawshank Redemption, uh, and it was actually directed by the same guy that would later go on to direct Green Mile for him, Frank Darabont, the same guy who directed the first two seasons of The Walking Dead. Okay. And I mean, I wanna, not that I give a shit about Walking Dead, but I want to okay, say he me. also. I think Frank Darabont also did um, The Mist, which is another good Stephen King uh, movie. But yeah, you it's, know, it's okay. <clears throat> Mist was all right. It was a movie. It was the inspiration for Half-Life. Really? The book The Mist was a heavy influencer on Half-Life's story. Okay. Yeah, no, I was not aware of this. Mm -hmm. Also, something that... Um, it is good, but I really hate that one chapter in the middle, and people know exactly what chapter I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't read the book. So, speaking of not knowing stuff... So, you know the recent episode we did where, um, we were just saying, like, who would win in a fight, so-and-so, and such-and-such? -and -such? Yeah. Apparently, someone did not like that. Like, we've gotten one thumb on it, and it's literally just a thumbs down. Like, and there's so and the person didn't leave a comment. Like, that drives me nuts, because I don't know if they gave the thumbs down because they just disagreed with who would win, or if they, like... Apparently they thought maybe it was some propaganda thing because we said that, you know, Putin would win a fist fight with uh, Roosevelt under certain circumstances. Ah. Despite, and it could, yeah, it could be anything. It could even be the, uh, the lack of, uh, what was it, of fact-checking before we made certain answers or before certain claims. Uh, trying to think what else. I make my statements off the cuff with no fact-checking whatsoever because I'm a real man. <laughs> so... <clears throat> but the um what else and there's also uh if it was some anti-vax person saying oh well this guy is trash talking jim carrey or if it's because i put facts at the bottom and made people learn or something how also dare you. also did you know uh, jim carrey 62 and johnny depp is 510 no also teddy roosevelt gave a, a 90 minute speech after being shot yeah that I knew. And he went on to, after that, he, despite losing the election, he was the highest, he got the highest percentage of votes for any third party candidate. Nice. At 27%. Yeah, I learned more about that incident, the uh, Roosevelt getting shot in speech afterward thing, than I expected to learn. Yeah. But, the, um... I can't imagine any modern politician stubbing a toe and not taking a month off. But, uh, Pinky, what you were saying before... Um, how I got uh, gear with specific um, uh, certain stats all over the stuff. So what I did was there, there's like a certain combination of ways that I did this. So, so you already know each uh, each drink or each um, clothing brand has a certain ability that it's more likely to roll when you level up. So let's take, um, shoot, let's, for example, okay, here's a good one. Uh, okay, so special charge up. Uh, you usually, you have to get, you have to wear Takaroka stuff. Takaroka has a higher likelihood of rolling uh, special charge up. So what I would usually do if I want to get, um, more special charge up on something. Let me use a different example. Let me grab something as an example here. Okay, uh, let's let's use a non-Takaroka item. Let's go with... Okay, here we go. So, if I go with this, let's say I want all uh, special gauge up on the Forge Mask. Well, the Forge Mask is not going to have special gauge up. That one you just got to go off of luck. So I would equip this in hopes that maybe... I'll roll a um, 
I'll roll a special gauge up just out of luck. And of course, you know, drink the appropriate drink to get to increase your chance of getting that stat. But then for the other two items, I would wear something Takaroka brand. That way, it's more likely to pull, um, to roll special gauge up on those, and then just scrub them. So you're gonna wanna try to lean on something with only one star so it levels up faster. So if I, let me see, where's, oh shoot, that was it, brand, okay. So if I look for, if I were just look for some Takaroka stuff, then I would, where's it at? Okay, here we go. So I would grab a level one thing like this, uh, use a couple shells just to give it three more item slots, and since it's level one, it would level up faster. So I think it only takes like 16,000, I think, total, to get up to max, instead of, you know, a level three that takes forever to max out. Then when this is done, and same thing with shoes, grab a pair of Takaroka shoes, throw that on, and once the shoes and the shirt max out, go ahead and uh, scrub them just to get the to get the chunks. And with any luck, hopefully you should get at least uh, two slots on your on your headgear that'll have you know whatever thing, whatever stat you're looking for, like a special gauge up. But if I only get one, I just scrub the hat the um, the headgear, start that over. If I get two or more, then I hold on to it, and then I'll, I'll still try to get the third slot to be something, but to be whatever thing I'm aiming for. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't roll special charge up, then you know I'll just leave it because it's got two out of three. That's fine. I want the angler hat. That? Yes. The angler fish mask. I mean, it, it is quite styling. And um, thing is that hey, get more drink tickets. I get most of my drink tickets from playing um, a Salmon Run. Now, the drink tickets are only going to be somewhere in the first 1,200 points, like where you have the a prize every 100 and then the super bonuses. Because after that, you're just going to get either whatever that month's gear is or old uh, repeats from previous month's gear. Now, that will still get you more chunks if those... Uh, if that old gear, if the extra gear has those abilities on it, but that's completely random, it's probably not the best use of time in regards to getting more chunks for your preferred ability. But, and also a lot of it is just, you know, if you find someone in the square that has gear you're looking for, just try to order it. Like this thing that I got right here, when I ordered it, I think it only had like two, I'm trying to think if this one had two or if it had three. I think it might have had two. I might be thinking of something else. But I think this was it. Was it? This might have been the one. I don't know. I got something that had two out of three. I think. But you know what I mean. You know, focus on one piece of gear. Have the other two things of that appropriate um, ability. And you can find all that on the Splatoon wiki. Just look up abilities, find what uh, what brand goes corresponds to whatever ability you want, and then just equip that brand on the other two body parts. After that, it's just a matter of patience. Um. <laughs> Pyro, is we happy for you a good game? It depends on the kind of game you want. No, it's not a good game. If you want an open world survival game, it's not a with good game. occasional chunks of surprisingly well written story, it's not a good game. It's not a great game. It's not a good game. But with the fixes that have been implemented, it's and if you are patient, the story is worth the trouble. But there is a lot of bullshit you have to contend with. It's not a good game. So basically, it's a really good story that was really interesting and had a whole lot of potential when it was still in beta. This I agree with. But there were a couple problems though. The first one was that when the game was still in beta and people had early access, the um, they were still charging a full price game. The disclaimer on the download even said, you are paying this amount for a currently unfinished game, by buying this, you uh, by buying this, you understand that this game may not be finished. So you're basically 
paying, thir at the time, $30 for something that may not even finish. So that was a big thing that kept me from buying it then, because it looked really interesting. Like, not, not giving any spoilers, this is just from like the first um, 10 minutes of the game. Your, your guy's just, um, he's basically censoring newspapers. There's only so much stuff that is allowed to uh, be seen by the citizens. And everyone's got like those clown makeup things, the, uh, the smiles on their faces. But everyone takes a, a drug called Joy. It's supposed to, uh, almost like, would you, like I know you don't have like actual experience in drugs, but just from what you've heard, would you say it's similar to ecstasy or something? Uh, like, yeah, actually, based on what I understand of how ecstasy works, uh, that and a massive endorphin stimulator to just yeah. force you to be happy. Because joy basically makes the the um, user sort of see things more vividly. Everything's bright and colorful and cheerful. Like you, you even when you, your character takes a, a hit of joy, they even get this effect where you just see like butterflies come off the bottom of the screen for a couple seconds before you go on your way. And your running animation changes to a jolly strolling a, a jolly, animation. Yeah, just you know the one of those. <laughs> yeah, but. And your guy starts to remember something from the past, and in the beginning of the game, you start to see like what happens, what the real world is like. Because your character has been off of joy for a short time, so things are starting to come back. The real world is starting to sort of sink in a bit. But a bunch of the a bunch of your character's co-workers are all gathered around a pinata. And, you know, someone hands you a stick and says, Go ahead and hit it, it's full of candy. So your guy, like, smacks this piñata with the stick, and he gets, like, splattered in the face with something. He kind of checks, and it's blood. And then when he pulls his hand away, he sees all of his co-workers, like, digging into this, uh, into the piñata. But now the joy has completely worn away, and it's not a piñata. He just whacked a dead rat. Yep. So all of his, all of the people he knows and works with are just digging into this dead rat and eating it. And that's when it's really sinking in to uh, your character that here. something is gravely wrong. But the, um... So the storyline had a lot of potential, because then... Like Bioshock levels of potential. Oh, yes. Like, before the game came out, I was super hyped for it. And that Literally. opening sequence is exactly what I wish the whole game was. Yeah, like, the... Mm. Honestly, that, that whole thing, the disclaimer on the download mm. that said, this may potentially not be finished, that was the only thing. Yeah. keeping me from buying it as soon as I saw it. Because yeah. it looked fantastic. But then it ran into some problems. It kept getting pushed back. If there were updates. Um, the, the game became kept, triple A out of nowhere. That was another thing. Gearbox got their hands on it. They turned it from a $30 game to a $60 game. Uh, by this point, it was... Like, it was using the whole open world survival crafting thing. But... At the time that the beta came out, it was still, you know, the biggest, newest thing. All the games were still doing it. But by the time We Happy Few actually released, people were done with crafting. They didn't want to craft anymore. They didn't want to have to worry about sleep, food, and water, and all that stuff. It was... it was just a... a mm. After Metal Gear already ruined the formula... Oh, God. Yeah, so We Happy Few was... And Fallout 76 looked at it and thought, We can do this! Oh, God. Like, We Happy Few had so much potential, and then it nosedived quickly. But I will say, the story is so, so good, that if you are willing to put up with a very mediocre survival game, the story is, depending on how important the story is to you, can make it worth it, if you don't pay full price for it. If you paid, like... $20 or less, the story is worth the price of admission then. Above that, no. Also, there are glitches abound. Uh, there is... What was it? As bad as it was, there was immediately a season pass for DLC. Yeah. And I'm trying to think, what was I gonna... I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, um, this person. There's another YouTuber, a guy named Jim Sterling. He actually did a, I want to say it was like 20 minute review on, um, on, uh, We Happy Few, and he just goes at great, just goes at length at all the things that are bad with this, it, like, mm. 
Yeah, it was... Like, Jim, Jim Sterling has some strong language, but he nails, like, everything that's horribly wrong with We Happy Few. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, it was... <clears throat> it was it was pretty bad. I was really upset that it was not nearly as good as um as I'd hoped. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm I'm sitting here running my mouth about like abilities and chunks and whatnot. Ooh, I do wanna get them. Where's there was a post somewhere around here that I wanted to uh Hey Brian, what do you make of this? Uh, I mean, I feel An like I, Anakin would like him because it would solve his problem. I feel like there's a meme that I'm missing out on, and I don't, I don't understand. Also, should, should, should I report this for like harassment? Because I don't, I feel like religion is being pushed on me. I, I don't, I, I don't feel safe. Well, I mean, also, I should absolutely do what I, the same thing I did. In the past two, uh, here it is. This is the one I wanted. No, you see, I see it as a hate message because um, I, I don't think Jesus exists. So what he's saying is nobody loves you. And he's doing it to attack you personally. No, uh, what I should do, I should uh, I should go to the little posting board over there. Yeah. I should uh, put up what I did the last two years. This says, like, um, last two Christmases. This says, uh, you know, remember to uh, love and respect your fellow man, no matter what uh, holiday they celebrate, and then sign it from your friends at the Satanic Temple. Yay! <laughs> I, I did that the last couple of years, and uh, I don't think I got reported. At least I didn't get reported last time, so I mean, it maybe, I don't know. If I, uh, if I actually take the time to do that. It's okay, I had one that I posted uh, earlier. It's like, if you want to have a... a positive Thanksgiving with your family, just remember, avoid difficult topics like politics and religion. Also, Trump is an asshole and God doesn't exist. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> but we have been kinda... Oh, let me see. This metal needs to come out with a remake? A better um, remake than the last one. I was about to say, didn't it kinda decline a bit? Yeah. Like, I haven't really been paying attention to... It never really got beyond Twisted Metal Black, and even that one hasn't aged well because it's just hard for the sake of being hard at times. Uh, other games did Twisted Metal's formula better, like uh, Cell Damage or Vigilante 8, which needs a remake, but sadly Luxaflux is gone. Oh! I think... I just realized something with the um with the abilities. Yeah. I didn't realize they did this. The um So there was an ability before called uh, cold blooded. Yeah. Like um if someone uses something on you that tracks your position, mm -hmm. it would actually reduce the amount of time that you're being tracked, which sounds good on paper except that almost no one uses yeah. stuff that tracks you, so it ended up being like just shy of useless. Okay. And then there was another ability called Bomb Defense. I didn't realize they they combined the two. Because, like, I used to have, like, well over a hundred cold-blooded chunks because I never freaking used it. I never put it on anything. And then this had... And I had a, a, a decent number of Bomb Defense. I didn't realize they did that. Like, because I, I remember, I know they added this, the main power-up, but I didn't, uh, when I went over here to see the, um, see the ability list, it didn't look like anything was added, so I was like, maybe they just replaced Cold-Blooded, but I didn't realize they combined the two. Well, take oh. two useless things and smash them yeah. together. Well, I mean, Bomb Defense Up wasn't really useless, it was, it wasn't, like, super common, but, yeah, Cold-Blooded was absolute, just, garbage. But that's, uh... Oh, hey. Wow, that is... It has been forever, actually, since I put in my friend code. How did I get a friend request now? What happened? Was it by friend code, or did someone, uh... This just some... Your friend code, yeah. I guess so? Should I? Sure. They played Fortnite for five hours. I don't think I should. Fortnite's awesome. Yeah, you shut fine. your stupid face. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky I didn't bring in my Fortnite action figures and just like hold, hold them up or hold them up on camera. Just like 
like s uh, just bring him uncomfortably close to my face. Yeah. Just kind of. Also, the Ragnarok figure is awesome because his beard is made of clear blue plastic and it looks amazing. Uh, is that the Viking? Or? Yeah, it was the Viking guy from last season that you unlocked at the end, but it's like the full armor version of him, and like. Okay. And he's got his pickaxe that you unlock for completing tasks with him too. So like. Oh, okay. He's actually even if you don't like Fortnite, it's a good-looking action figure because it's skull dude with clear plastic as well. It's like that's like two of the holy trinity of awesome action figures. Skulls, robots, and clear plastic. Those are the best kind of action figures. <laughs> Though you can interchange Where are the titties? Cuz you can interchange robots Where with are the just titties. Masked mooks. Where are the titties though? Over there. Well, yeah, but it's it's not the look you. Oh goodness. Okay, yeah, we've. Oh. Yeah, I do need to. Uh, we, we need to record some yeah. episodes because we've we've only got a, a couple episodes of dust left. You got to finish. Yeah. You you finished putting uh, that one, that one woman, the the lightning lady, in her place. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's going to be it for uh, tonight's stream. But we are, however. Um, so there's not going to be a stream tomorrow night. Let me rephrase that, actually. There's not going to be a, a stream Thursday night, what would be considered technically Thursday night in Central Time Zone. However, I do fully plan on doing a... Uh, a Smash Brothers stream starting at about midnight going into Friday. Like, I will be starting the game at 12.01 a.m. if everything goes right. To not, I guess tomorrow night, sort of? Yeah. If that, technically? I've always classified the following day as not really the time, but... Me going to sleep and waking back up, or the sun rising, whichever happens yeah, first. Yeah, because that's because I got I got Friday off. So what I'm thinking about doing, just like when I get home from work tomorrow, immediately take a nap, set my alarm for like 11:30. Nice. And then probably like um like 11:55 p.m. start at the stream and be like, all right, guys, you ready? You ready? Just like all hyped up and everything. 12:01, <laughs> throw it in there and just just Becky, let me smash. Ah. Uh. But, uh, yeah, yeah, Barf Dog, I, I am definitely going to be, uh, definitely going to be playing a whole lot of, whole lot of smush siblings. But I'm going to call it at that point for tonight. Uh, everyone, thank you for, for, uh, stopping in, sticking around. Did, did you want to say bye on camera? I was going to grab the camera and just kind of point it at you. There you go. Say, say bye. 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 Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye everyone. Are you are you really just gonna stare at them without blinking, Brian? I, I'm not gonna subject them to that anymore. I'm gonna. You guys have a good night. <laughs> <laughs>